Chapter One of Ice Creams, Water Ices, Frozen Puddings. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Betty B. Ice Creams, Water Ices, Frozen Puddings by Sarah Tyson Heston Rohr. Forward containing general directions for all recipes. In this book, Philadelphia ice creams, comprising the first group, are very palatable, but expensive. In many parts of the country, it is quite difficult to get good cream. For that reason, I have given a group of creams using part milk and part cream, but it must be remembered that it takes smart juggling to make ice cream from milk. By far better use condensed milk with enough water or milk to rinse out the cans. Ordinary fruit creams may be made with condensed milk at a cost of about 15 cents a quart, which of course is cheaper than ordinary milk and cream. In places where neither cream nor condensed milk can be purchased, a fair ice cream is made by adding two tablespoonfuls of olive oil to each quart of milk. The cream for Philadelphia ice cream should be rather rich, but not double cream. If pure raw cream is stirred rapidly, it swells and becomes frothy, like the beaten whites of eggs, and is whipped cream. To prevent this in making Philadelphia ice cream, one half the cream is scalded, and when it is very cold, the remaining half of raw cream is added. This gives the smooth, light, and rich consistency which makes these creams so different from others. Use of fruits. Use fresh fruits in the summer and the best canned unsweetened fruits in the winter. If sweetened fruits must be used, cut down the given quantity of sugar. Where acid fruits are used, they should be added to the cream after it is partly frozen. Time for freezing. The time for freezing varies according to the quality of cream or milk or water. Water ices require a longer time than ice creams. It is not well to freeze the mixtures too rapidly. They are apt to be coarse not smooth and if they are churned before the mixture is icy cold they will be greasy or buttery the average time for freezing two quarts of cream should be ten minutes it takes but a minute or two longer for larger quantities directions for freezing pound the ice in a large bag with a mallet or use an ordinary ice shaver the finer the ice the less time it takes to freeze the cream a four-quart freezer will require ten pounds of ice and a quart and a pint of coarse rock salt. You may pack the freezer with a layer of ice three inches thick, then a layer of salt one inch thick, or mix the ice and salt in the tub and shovel it around the freezer. Before beginning to pack the freezer, turn the crank to see that all the machinery is in working order. Then open the can and turn in the mixture that is to be frozen. Turn the crank slowly and steadily until the mixture begins to freeze, then more rapidly until it is completely frozen. If the freezer is properly packed, it will take 15 minutes to freeze the mixture. Philadelphia ice creams are not good if frozen too quickly. To repack. After the cream is frozen, wipe off the lid of the can and remove the crank. Take off the lid, being very careful not to allow any salt to fall into the can. Remove the dasher and scrape it off. Take a large knife or steel spatula. Scrape the cream from the sides of the can. Work and pack it down until it is perfectly smooth. Put the lid back on the can and put a cork in the hole from which the dasher was taken. Draw off the water, repack, and cover the hole with a piece of brown paper. Throw over a heavy bag or a bit of burlap and stand aside for one or two hours to ripen to mold ice creams, ices, or puddings. If you wish to pack ice cream and serve it in forms or shapes, it must be molded after the freezing. The handiest of all these molds is either the brick or the melon mold. After the cream is frozen rather stiff, prepare a tub or bucket of coarsely chopped ice with one half less salt than you use for freezing. To each 10 pounds of ice, allow one quart of rock salt. Sprinkle a little rock salt in the bottom of your bucket or tub, then put over a layer of cracked ice, another layer of salt and cracked ice, and on this stand your mold, which is not filled, 
but is covered with a lid and pack it all around leaving the top of course to pack later on take your freezer near this tub remove the lid from the mold and pack in the cream smoothing it down until you have filled it to overflowing smooth the top with a spatula or limber knife put over a sheet of wax paper and adjust the lid have a strip of muslin or cheesecloth dipped in hot paraffin or suet and quickly bind the seam of the lid this will remove the danger of salt water entering the pudding now cover the mold thoroughly with ice and salt make sure that your packing tub or bucket has a hole below the top of the mold so that the salt water will be drained off if you are packing in small molds each mold as fast as it is closed should be wrapped in wax paper and put down into the salt and ice these must be filled quickly and packed molds should stand two hours and may stand longer to remove ice creams ices and puddings from molds ice cream may be molded in the freezer you will then have a perfectly round smooth mold which serves very well for puddings that are to be garnished and saves a great deal of trouble and extra expense for salt and ice as cold water is warmer than the ordinary freezing mixture after you lift the can or mold wipe off the salt hold it for a minute under the cold water spigot then quickly wipe the top and bottom and remove the lid loosen the pudding with a limber knife hold the mold a little slanting give it a shake and nine times out of ten it will come out quickly having the perfect shape of the can or mold if the cream still sticks and refuses to come out wipe the mold with a towel wrung from warm water hot water spoils the gloss of puddings and unless you know exactly how to use it the cream is too much melted to garnish all frozen puddings water ices sherbets and sorbets are frozen and molded according to these directions the quantities given in these recipes are arranged in equal amounts so that for a smaller number of persons they can easily be divided quantities for serving each quart of ice cream will serve in dessert plates four persons in stem ice cream dishes silver or glass it will serve six persons a quart of ice or sherbet will fill ten small sherbet stem glasses to serve with the meat course at dinner this quantity will serve in lemonade glasses eight persons end of chapter one chapter number two of ice creams water rices frozen puddings this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. ice creams water rices frozen puddings by sarah tyson heston rohrer chapter two philadelphia ice creams burned almond ice cream one quart of cream half pound of sugar four ounces of sweet almonds one tablespoon of caramel one tablespoon of vanilla extract four tablespoons of sherry shell blanch and roast the almonds until they are a golden brown then grate them put half the cream and all the sugar over the fire in a double boiler stir until the sugar is dissolved take it from the fire add the caramel and the almonds and when cold add the remaining pint of cream the vanilla and the sherry freeze as directed on page seven this quantity will serve eight persons apricot ice cream six ounces of sugar one quart of cream one can of apricots or one quart of fresh apricots if fresh apricots are used take an extra quarter of a pound of sugar put half the cream and all the sugar over the fire in a double boiler and stir until the sugar is dissolved take from the fire and when cold add the remaining cream turn the mixture into the freezer and when frozen fairly stiff add the apricots after having been pressed through a colander return the lid adjust the crank and turn it slowly for five minutes then remove the dasher and repack this quantity should serve ten persons banana ice cream one quart of cream six large bananas half pound of sugar one teaspoonful of vanilla put half the cream and all the sugar over the fire and stir until the sugar is dissolved take from fire and when perfectly cold add the remaining half of the cream 
freeze the mixture and add the bananas mashed or pressed through a colander put on a lid adjust the crank and turn until the mixture is frozen rather hard this quantity will serve ten persons biscuit ice cream six wine biscuits one quart of cream half pound of sugar one teaspoonful of vanilla grate and sift the biscuits scald half the ice cream and the sugar when cold add the remaining cream and the vanilla and freeze when frozen remove the dasher stir in the powdered biscuits and repack to ripen this quantity will serve six persons apple ice cream four large tart apples one quart of cream half pound of sugar one tablespoon of lemon juice put half the cream and all the sugar over the fire and stir until the sugar is dissolved when the mixture is perfectly cold freeze it and add the lemon juice and the apples pared and grated finish the freezing and repack to ripen the apples must be pared at the last minute and grated into the cream if they are grated on a dish and allowed to remain in the air they will turn very dark and spoil the color of the cream brown bread ice cream three half inch slices of boston brown bread one quart of cream half pound of sugar one teaspoonful of vanilla or one fourth of a vanilla bean or a teaspoonful of vanilla extract dry and toast the bread in the oven grate or pound it and put it through an ordinary sieve heat half the ice cream and all the sugar take from the fire add vanilla and when cold add the remaining cream and freeze when frozen remove the dasher stir in the brown bread repack and stand aside to ripen this quantity will serve six persons caramel ice cream number one one quart of cream half pound of sugar one teaspoonful of vanilla put four tablespoonfuls of sugar in an iron frying pan over a strong fire shake until the sugar melts turns brown smokes and burns add quickly a half cupful of water let it boil a minute take from the fire and put it with all the sugar and half the cream in a double boiler over the fire stir until the sugar is dissolved take from the fire and when cold add the remaining cream and vanilla and freeze this quantity will serve six persons caramel ice cream number two one quart of cream one pint of milk half cup of brown sugar half pound of granulated sugar two teaspoonfuls of vanilla put the brown sugar in a frying pan over the fire shake it until it melts burns and smokes take it from the fire and add two tablespoonfuls of water heat until the sugar is again melted put it in a double boiler with the milk and all the sugar stir until the sugar is dissolved and stand aside to cool when cold add half the cream and the vanilla and freeze when frozen sufficiently stiff to remove the dasher stir in the remaining pint of cream whipped to a stiff froth repack and stand aside for three hours this quantity will serve ten persons bisque ice cream one quart of cream one fourth pound of almond macaroons four kisses a half pound of sugar one slice of stale sponge cake or two stale lady fingers one teaspoonful of caramel one teaspoonful of vanilla if you use it four tablespoonfuls of sherry pound the macarons kisses lady fingers of sponge cake and put them through a colander put half the cream and all the sugar over the fire in a double boiler when the sugar is dissolved stand the mixture aside to cool when cold add the remaining cream the caramel sherry and vanilla turn the mixture into the freezer and when frozen add the pounded cakes stir the mixture until it's perfectly smooth and well mixed and repack bisque ice cream is better for a three hour stand this quantity will serve six persons chocolate ice cream one quart of cream one pint of milk half pound of sugar four ounces of chocolate one teaspoonful of vanilla or one fourth of a vanilla bean one fourth of a teaspoonful of cinnamon grate the chocolate put it in a double boiler with the milk stir until hot and add the sugar vanilla cinnamon and one pint of the cream when cold freeze when frozen remove the dasher and stir in the remaining pint of the cream whipped to a stiff froth this will serve ten persons coffee ice cream one quart of cream half pound of pulverized sugar four ounces of so-called mocha coffee grind the mocha rather coarse Put it in the double boiler with one half the cream and steep over the fire for at least ten minutes. Strain through a fine muslin or flannel bag, 
pressing it hard to get out all the strength of the coffee. Add the sugar and stir until dissolved. When cold, add the remaining pint of cream and freeze. This will serve six persons. Curacao ice cream. One quart of cream, one wine glassful of curacao, half pound of sugar, two tablespoonfuls of orange blossoms water, juice of two oranges. Put the sugar in half the cream over the fire in a double boiler. When the sugar is dissolved, take it from the fire and when cold, add the curacao, orange juice and orange blossoms water. Add the remaining cream and freeze. This will serve six persons. Ginger ice cream. One quart of cream, one fourth pound of preserved ginger, half pound of sugar, one tablespoonful of lemon juice. Put the ginger through an ordinary meat chopper. Heat the sugar, ginger, and half the cream in a double boiler. When the sugar is dissolved, take it from the fire, and when cold, add the lemon juice and remaining cream and freeze. Maraschino ice cream. One quart of cream, half pound of sugar, one orange, two wine glassfuls of maraschino, two drops of angostura bitters or half teaspoonful of extract of vile cherry. Put the sugar in half the cream in a double boiler and stir until the sugar is dissolved. When cold, add the remaining cream, the juice of the orange, the bitters or wild cherry, and the maraschino, and freeze. Serve in parfait glasses to six persons. Lemon ice cream. One quart of cream, nine ounces of powdered sugar, four tablespoonfuls of lemon juice, juice of one orange, grated yellow rind of three lemons. Mix the sugar, the grated rind, and juice of the lemons and the orange juice together. Put half the cream in a double boiler over the fire. When scalding hot, stand it aside until perfectly cold. Add the remaining half of the cream and freeze it rather hard. Remove the crank and the lid. Add the sugar mixture. Replace the lid and crank and turn rapidly for five minutes. Repack to ripen. This will serve six people. Orange ice cream. One quart of cream. Ten ounces of sugar. Juice of six large oranges grated rind of one orange. Put the sugar, grated yellow rind of the orange, and half the cream in a double boiler over the fire. When the sugar is dissolved, take from the fire, and when very cold, add the remaining cream and freeze. When frozen rather hot, add the orange juice, refreeze and pack to ripen. Pineapple ice cream. One quart of cream, 12 ounces of sugar, one large ripe pineapple or one pint can of grated pineapple, Juice of one lemon. Put half the cream and half the sugar in a double boiler over the fire. When the sugar is dissolved, stand it aside until cold. Pare and grate the pineapple. Add the remaining half of the sugar and stand it aside. When the cream is cold, add the remaining cream and partly freeze. Then add the lemon juice to the pineapple and add it to the frozen cream. Turn the freezer five minutes longer and repack. This will serve eight or ten persons. Green gauge ice cream. One quart of cream, four ounces of sugar, one pint of preserved green gauges, free from syrup. Press the green gauges through a sieve. Add the sugar to half the cream. Stir it in a double boiler until the sugar is dissolved. When cold, add the remaining cream. When this is partly frozen, stir in the green gauge pulp and finish the freezing as directed on page 7. If the green gauges are colorless, add three or four drops of apple green coloring to the cream before freezing. Raspberry ice cream, one quart of cream, one quart of raspberries, 12 ounces of sugar, juice of one lemon. Mash the raspberries, add half the sugar and the lemon juice. Put the remaining sugar and half the cream in a double boiler, stir until the sugar is dissolved and stand aside to cool. When cold, add the remaining cream, turn the mixture into the freezer and stir until partly frozen. Remove the lid and add the mashed raspberries and stir again for five or 10 minutes until the mixture is sufficiently hard to repack. This will serve eight or ten persons. Strawberry ice cream. Make precisely the same as raspberry ice cream, substituting one quart of strawberries for the raspberries. Pistachio ice cream. One quart of cream, half pound of sugar, half pound of shelled pistachio nuts, one teaspoonful of almond extract, ten drops of green coloring. Blanch and pound or grate the nuts. Put half the cream and all the sugar in a double boiler. Stir until the sugar is dissolved and stand aside to cool. When cold, add the nuts. The flavoring and the remaining cream mix. Add the coloring and turn into the freezer to freeze. If green coloring matter is not at hand, 
a little spinach or parsley may be chopped and rubbed with a small quantity of alcohol this quantity will serve six persons vanilla ice cream one quart of cream half pound of sugar one vanilla or two teaspoonfuls of vanilla extract put the sugar and half the cream in a double boiler over the fire split the vanilla bean scrape out the seeds and add them to the hot cream and add the bean broken into pieces stir until the sugar is dissolved and strained through a colander when this is cold add the remaining cream and freeze this should be repacked and given two hours to ripen four would be better this will serve six persons walnut ice cream one quart of cream half pound of sugar one teaspoonful of vanilla one teaspoonful of caramel half pint of black walnut meats put the sugar and half the cream over the fire in a double boiler when the sugar is dissolved stand it aside to cool when cold add the remaining cream the walnuts chopped then the flavoring and freeze this will serve six persons end of chapter two chapter three of ice creams water ices frozen puddings this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by jennifer painter ice creams water ices frozen puddings by sarah tyson heston rohrer chapter three Neapolitan creams. In this group, we have a set of frozen desserts called by many ice creams, but which are really frozen custards, flavoured. In localities where cream is not accessible, the Neapolitan creams are far better than milk thickened with cornstarch or gelatin. Chocolate. One pint of cream, one pint of milk, half a pound of sugar, four eggs, two ounces of chocolate, a small piece of stick cinnamon, one teaspoonful of vanilla. Put the milk and cinnamon over the fire in a double boiler. Beat the yolks of the eggs and sugar until very light. Add the well-beaten whites and stir this into the hot milk. As soon as the mixture begins to thicken, take it from the fire. Add the grated chocolate and, when cold, Add the cream and the vanilla. Freeze and pack as directed on page 7. This is sufficient to serve 10 persons. Caramel. One pint of cream, one pint of milk, half a pound of sugar, four eggs, three tablespoonfuls of caramel, one teaspoonful of vanilla. Beat the yolks of the eggs until creamy and add the sugar. Beat until light and then add the well-beaten whites of the eggs. Put the milk over the fire in a double boiler. When hot, add the eggs and stir and cook until the mixture begins to thicken. Take from the fire, strain through a fine sieve, add the vanilla and caramel, and when cold, add the cream and freeze. This will serve 10 persons. Coffee. One pint of strong black coffee, one pint of cream, two eggs, half a pound of sugar, one teaspoonful of vanilla. Beat the sugar and the yolks of the eggs until light, add the well-beaten whites and pour into them the coffee, boiling hot. Stir over the fire for a minute, take from the fire, add the vanilla and when cold add the cream and freeze. This will serve eight persons. Vanilla. One pint of cream, one pint of milk, half a pound of sugar, three eggs, one quarter vanilla bean or a teaspoonful of good extract. Put the milk over the fire in a double boiler and add the vanilla bean split. Beat the yolks of the eggs and the sugar until light. Add the whites beaten to a stiff froth and stir into them the hot milk. Return the mixture to the double boiler and cook until it begins to thicken or will coat a knife blade dipped into it. Take from the fire, strain through a colander and when cold add the cream and freeze. 
Repack and stand to ripen for three hours or longer. This will serve eight persons. Walnut. One pint of cream, one pint of milk, two eggs, half a pint of chopped black walnuts, one teaspoonful of vanilla, one teaspoonful of caramel. Beat the yolks of the eggs and the sugar until light. Add the well-beaten whites and then the milk, scalding hot. Stir over the fire in a double boiler until the mixture begins to thicken. Take from the fire and add the vanilla and caramel. When cold, add the walnuts and cream and freeze. This will serve eight persons. Neapolitan blocks. These are made by putting layers of various kinds and colours of ice creams into a brick mould. Pack and freeze. At serving time, cut into slices crosswise of the brick and serve each slice on a paper mat. End of chapter 3「Chapter 4 of Ice Creams, Water Ices, Frozen Puddings – This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Larry, Johnson City, Tennessee. Ice Creams, Water Ices, Frozen Puddings by Sarah Tyson Heston Rower Chapter 4 Ice Creams from Condensed Milk These creams are not so good as those made from raw cream, but with care and good flavoring are quite as good as the ordinary Neapolitan creams. There is one advantage. Condensed milk is not so liable to curdle when mixed with fresh fruits. These recipes will answer also for what is sold under the name of evaporated cream. Use unsweetened milk or allow for the sugar in the sweetened varieties. Banana, six large bananas, quarter pound of sugar, one half pint can of condensed milk, one half cupful of water, juice of one lemon, Press the bananas through a sieve and add the lemon juice and sugar. Stand aside a half hour, add milk and water. Stir until the sugar is dissolved and freeze as directed on page 7. This will serve six persons. Caramel Quarter cup of brown sugar Half cup full of granulated sugar one cup full of water, two half pint cans of condensed milk, one teaspoonful of vanilla. Put the brown sugar in an iron pan, melt and brown it. When it begins to smoke, add two tablespoonfuls of hot water. Stir until liquid. Pour out the milk, rinse the cans with the water, add the caramel, vanilla, and granulated sugar. When the sugar is dissolved, freeze as directed on page 7. This will serve six persons. Coconut. Two large coconuts. One pint of boiling water. Half pint of sweetened condensed milk. Grate the coconuts and pour them over the boiling water. Stir until it is cool and press into a sieve. Put the fiber in a cheesecloth and wring it dry. Add this to the water that was strained through the sieve. When cold, add condensed milk and freeze as directed on page 7. This will serve eight persons. Chocolate number 1. Two ounces of Baker's chocolate. Half pint of water. One salt spoonful of ground cinnamon. Two half pint cans of condensed milk. One teaspoon of vanilla. Quarter pound of sugar. 
Put the water, chocolate, sugar, and cinnamon in a saucepan. Stir until boiling. Take from the fire. Add the vanilla. Add the condensed milk. When cold, freeze as directed on page 7. This will serve six persons. Chocolate number two. Four ounces of Baker's chocolate. Half pint of water. Half pound of sugar. Two half pint cans of condensed milk. One pint of milk. Two teaspoons of vanilla. One salt spoonful of ground cinnamon. Put the chocolate sugar, water, and cinnamon in a saucepan over the fire. Stir until the mixture boils. Take from the fire and add all the remaining ingredients. When cold, freeze as directed on page 7. This will serve 8 persons. Coffee. 1 pint of strong black coffee. Half cupful of sugar. Half pint of condensed milk. One teaspoon of vanilla. Add the sugar to the hot coffee and stir until it is dissolved. Add the milk using water enough to rinse out the cans. Add the vanilla. When the mixture is cold, freeze, turning it rapidly toward the end of the freezing. This will serve four persons. Peach. 12 ripe or canned peaches, 4 peach kernels, half pint of water, 2 half pint cans of unsweetened condensed milk, half pound of sugar. Put the sugar, water, and peach kernels over the fire. Stir until the sugar is dissolved and boils 3 minutes. Pare the peaches and press them through a colander. Add them to the strained syrup. When cold, turn the mixture into the freezer and turn the crank slowly until partially frozen. Add the milk and continue the freezing. Omit the water and use less sugar with canned peaches. This will serve 10 persons. Orange number 1. One full pint of orange juice. Two thirds cupful of sugar half pint can of condensed milk, grated yellow rind of two oranges. Grade the rind into the sugar. Add milk and enough water to rinse cans. When the sugar is dissolved, stand it in a cold place. Put the orange juice in the freezer and freeze it quite hard. Add sweetened milk and freeze again quickly. This will serve four persons. Orange number two. Freeze a full quart of orange juice. When quite hard, add a can of sweetened condensed milk. Freeze it again and serve it at once. This is very nice and will serve eight persons. Orange gelatin cream. Half pint of orange juice. One package of orange jello, half pound of sugar, one pint can of unsweetened condensed milk, half pint of water. Add the grated yellow rinds of two oranges to the jello. Add the sugar and the water, boiling. Stir until the sugar and jello are dissolved. Add the orange juice, and when the mixture is cold, Put it in the freezer and stir slowly until it begins to freeze. Add the condensed milk and continue the freezing. This is nice served in tall glasses with the beaten whites of the eggs made into a meringue and heaped on top. In this way it will serve eight persons. Sour Sop One large sour sop Quarter pound of sugar half pint can of unsweetened condensed milk, four tablespoons full of boiling water, juice from one lime. Squeeze the sour sop, which should measure nearly one quart. 
add the sugar melted in the water with the lime juice and milk freeze slowly this will serve ten persons end of chapter four chapter five of ice creams water ices frozen puddings this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Betty B. Ice Creams, Water Ices, Frozen Puddings by Sarah Tyson Heston Rohr. Frozen Puddings and Desserts. Alaska Bake. Make a vanilla ice cream, one or two quarts, as the occasion demands. When the ice cream is frozen, pack it in a brick mold, cover each side of the mold with letter paper, and fasten the bottom and lid. Wrap the whole in wax paper and pack it in salt and ice. Freeze for at least two hours before serving time. At serving time, make a meringue from the whites of six eggs beaten to a froth. Add six tablespoonfuls of sifted powdered sugar and beat until fine and dry. Turn the ice cream from the mold, place it on a serving platter, and stand the platter on a steak board or an ordinary thick plank. Cover the mold with the meringue pressed through a star tube in a pastry bag, or spread it all over the ice cream as you would ice a cake. Decorate the top quickly and dust it thickly with powdered sugar. Stand it under the gas burners in a gas boiler or on the grate in a hot coal or wood oven until it is lightly browned and send it quickly to the table. There is no danger of the ice melting if you will protect the underside of the plate. The meringue acts as a non-conductor for the upper part. A two-quart mold with meringue will serve ten persons. Alexander Baum One pint of cream, one pint of milk, four eggs, four tart apples, one pint of water, one glass full of orange blossoms water, one wine glass full of curacao, one pound of sugar, juice of one lemon. Peel, core, and quarter the apples. Put them in a saucepan with the grated yellow rind of the lemon, half the sugar and all the water boil until tender and add the juice of the lemon rub the apples through a sieve when cold freeze whip the cream beat the eggs and the remaining sugar and add them to the milk hot stir until the mixture thickens take from the fire and when cold add the orange blossoms water and the curacao freeze in another freezer divide the whipped cream and stir one half into the first and one half into the other mixture line a melon mold with the custard mixture fill the center space with the frozen apples and cover over another layer of the custard put over a sheet of letter paper and put on the lid bind the seam with a strip of muslin dipped in paraffin or suet and pack the mold in salt and ice freeze for at least two hours serve plain or it may be garnished with whipped cream this will serve twelve persons biscuits americana one quart of cream, one half pound of sugar, one quarter pound of Jordan almonds, one teaspoonful of almond extract, one teaspoonful of vanilla, yolks of six eggs, grated rind of one lemon. Put half the cream in a double boiler over the fire, and when hot, add the yolks of the eggs and sugar, beaten until very, very light. Add all the flavoring and stand aside until very cold. When cold, freeze in an ordinary freezer. Whip the remaining pint of cream, add one half of it to the frozen mixture, repack and stand aside to ripen. Blanch, dry, and chop the almonds. Put them in the oven and shake constantly until they are a golden brown. At serving time, fill the frozen mixture quickly into paper cases. Have the remaining whipped cream in a pastry bag with star tube. Make a little rosette on the top of each case, dust thickly with the chopped almonds, and send to the table. This will fill 12 cases of ordinary size. Biscuits glace. One pint of cream, three quarter pound of sugar, one pint of water, one gill of sherry, two tablespoonfuls of brandy, one teaspoonful of vanilla, yolks of six eggs. Put the sugar and water in a saucepan over the fire and stir until the sugar is dissolved. Wipe down the sides of the pan and boil until the syrup spins a heavy thread or makes a soft ball when dropped into cold water. Beat the yolks of the eggs to a cream, add them to the boiling syrup, and with an egg beater, whisk over the fire, 
until you have a custard-like mixture that will thickly coat a knife blade. Strain through a sieve into a bowl and whisk until the mixture is stiff and cold. It should look like a very light sponge cake batter. Add the flavoring. Whip the cream and stir it carefully into the mixture. Fill the mixture into paper cases or individual dishes. Stand them in a freezing cave or in a tin bucket that is well packed in salt and ice. Cover and freeze for at least four or five hours. If you do not have a freezing cave, pack a good-sized tin kettle in a small tub or water bucket. The kettle must have a tight-fitting lid. Stand your cases or molds on the bottom of the tin kettle, which is packed in salt and ice. Put on top a sheet of letter paper, on top of this another layer of molds or cases, and so continue until you have the kettle filled. Put the lid on the kettle and cover with salt and ice. Make sure that you have a hole halfway up in the packing bucket or tub, so that there is no danger of salt water overflowing the kettle. This is a homely but very good freezing cave. At serving time, dust the tops of the biscuits with grated macaroons or chopped almonds, dish on paper mats, and send to the table. This will fill 15 biscuit cases. Biscuits a la Marie. One half pound of sugar, one pint of water, one half pint of cream, one half pound of almond macaroons, one quarter pound of candied or maraschino cherries, one teaspoonful of bitter almond extract, yolks of six eggs. Boil the sugar and water until the syrup will spin a heavy thread. Add the eggs, beaten until very light. Whip this over the fire for three minutes, take it from the fire, strain into a bowl, and whip until thick and cold. Add the flavoring and the macaroons that have been dried, grated, and sifted. Add the cream whipped. Fill the mixture into paper cases and freeze as directed for biscuits glacé. An extra half pint of cream may be whipped for garnish at serving time, if desired. Otherwise, garnish the top with chopped maraschino cherries and send to the table. This will fill 12 biscuit cases. Bomb glacé. Pack a two-quart bomb glacé mold in salt and ice. Remove the lid and line the mold with a quart of well-made vanilla ice cream. Fill the center with one-half the recipe for a biscuit glacé mixture that has been packed in a freezer until icy cold. Put on the lid, bind the edge with a piece of muslin dipped in paraffin or suet. Cover the mold with salt and ice and stand aside three hours to freeze. This will serve 12 persons. Biscuit Tortoni one quart of cream, one half pound of sugar, one gill of maraschino, two tablespoonfuls of sherry, one teaspoonful of vanilla, yolks of six eggs. Put half the cream in a double boiler over the fire. Beat the sugar and yolks together until very, very light. Add them to the hot cream and stir over the fire until the mixture begins to thicken. Take from the fire and, when very cold, add the vanilla, maraschino, and sherry and freeze. When frozen, stir in the remaining cream whipped to a stiff froth. Fill individual dishes or paper cases. Stand at once in the freezing kettle or ice cave. Pack and freeze from three to four hours. This will fill 12 cases. Cabinet pudding iced. One quart of milk, six eggs, one quarter pound of powdered sugar, one tablespoonful of powdered gelatin, one quarter pound of macaroons and lady fingers mixed one half pound of conserved cherries or pineapple, one half pound of stale sponge cake. Grate the macaroons and lady fingers and rub them through a coarse sieve. Cut the sponge cake into slices and then into strips. Pour the milk over the fire in a double boiler and add the eggs and sugar beaten together until light. Stir and cook until the mixture is sufficiently thick to coat a knife blade. Take from the fire, add the gelatin, strain and stand it aside to cool. Garnish the bottom of a two-quart melon mold with the cherries or pineapple. Put in a layer of the sponge cake, then a sprinkling of the macaroons and ladyfingers, another layer of the cherries, then the sponge cake, and so continue until you have all the ingredients used. Add a teaspoonful of vanilla to the custard, pour it in the mold, cover the mold with the lid, bind the seam with muslin dipped in paraffin or suet, pack in salt and ice, and stand aside for three hours. At serving time, dip the mold quickly into hot water. Wipe it off, remove the lid, and turn the pudding onto a cold platter. Pour around a well-made Montreux sauce and send to the table. 
This will serve 10 or 12 persons. Iced Cake Make an angel food or a sunshine cake and bake it in a square mold. Make a plain frozen custard and flavor it with vanilla. Pack it and stand it aside until serving time. Cut off the top of the cake, take out the center, leaving a bottom and wall one inch thick. At serving time, fill the cake quickly with the frozen custard. Replace the top, dust it thickly with powdered sugar and chopped almonds, and send it to the table with a sauce boat of cold Montrose sauce. This cake may be varied by using different garnishings. Maraschino cherries may be used in place of almonds, or the base of the cake may be garnished with preserved green walnuts or green gauges, or the top and sides may be garnished with rosettes of whipped cream. This will serve 12 persons. Quick Caramel Parfait Make a quart of caramel ice cream, pack and stand it aside for two hours. At serving time, stir in a pint of cream, whipped to a stiff froth. Dish it in parfait glasses and send to the table. The top of the glasses may be garnished with whipped cream if desired. This will fill eight glasses. Quick Café Parfait Make a quart of plain coffee ice cream, freeze and pack it. Whip one pint of cream. At serving time, stir the whipped cream into the frozen coffee dish. Dish it at once into tall parfait glasses. Garnish the top with a rosette of whipped cream and send at once to table. This will fill eight glasses. Quick Strawberry Parfait this is made precisely the same as other parfaits with strawberry ice cream and whipped cream stirred in at serving time. Serve in parfait glasses, garnish the top with whipped cream with a strawberry in the center on top. This will fill eight glasses. Quick chocolate parfait. Make one quart of chocolate ice cream and add one pint of whipped cream according to the preceding recipes. This will serve eight persons. Monte Carlo pudding. One quart of cream, six ounces of sugar, two-thirds of a cupful, four tablespoonfuls of creme de violette, one half pound of candied violets, one teaspoonful of vanilla. Pour half the cream over the fire in a double boiler. Pound or roll the violets, sift them, add the sugar, and sufficient hot cream to dissolve them. Take the cream from the fire, add the violet sugar, and stir until it is dissolved. When cold, add the flavoring and the remaining cream. Freeze and pack into a two-quart pyramid mold. Pack in salt and ice for at least two hours. At serving time, turn the ice onto a platter, garnish the base with whipped cream, and the whole with candied violets. This will serve six to eight persons. Boston Pudding Make Boston brown bread ice cream and half the recipe for tutti frutti. When both are frozen, line a melon mold with the brown bread ice cream. Fill the center with the tutti frutti, Cover over more of the brown bread ice cream, fasten tightly, and bind the seam of the lid with a strip of muslin dipped in paraffin or suet. Pack in salt and ice for at least two hours. At serving time, dip the mold quickly into hot water. Turn the pudding onto a cold platter, pour around the base caramel sauce, and serve at once. This will serve 12 persons. Montrose Pudding One quart of cream, one cupful of granulated sugar, one tablespoonful of vanilla, one pint of strawberry water ice, yolks of six eggs. Put half the cream over the fire in a double boiler. Beat the yolks and sugar together until light. Add them to the boiling cream and cook and stir for one minute until it begins to thicken. Take from the fire, add the remaining pint of cream and the vanilla and stand aside until very cold. Freeze and pack into a round or melon mold, leaving a well in the center. Fill this well with strawberry water ice that has been frozen an hour before and cover it with some of the pudding mixture that you have left in the freezer. Fasten the lid, bind the seam with a piece of muslin dipped in suet or paraffin and pack in salt and ice to stand for not less than two hours. Four is better. Serve with Montrose sauce poured around it. This will serve 12 persons. Nestle Road Pudding One pint of Spanish chestnuts, one half pound of sugar, one pint of boiling water, one half pint of shelled almonds, one pound of French candied fruit mixed, one pint of heavy cream, one quarter pound of candied pineapple, yolks of six eggs. Shell the chestnuts, scald and remove the brown skins. Cover with boiling water and boil until they are tender, not too soft, and press them through a sieve. Shell, blanch, and pound the almonds. Cut the fruit into tiny pieces. 
put the sugar and water in a saucepan stir until the sugar is dissolved wipe down the sides of the pan and boil without stirring until the syrup forms a soft ball when dropped into ice water beat the yolks of the eggs until very light add them to the boiling syrup and stir over the fire until the mixture again boils take it from the fire and with an ordinary egg beater whisk the mixture until it is cold and thick as sponge cake batter add the fruit the chestnuts almond paste a teaspoonful of vanilla and if you use it four tablespoonfuls of sherry turn the mixture into the freezer and when it is frozen stir in the cream whipped to a stiff froth the mixture may now be repacked in the can or it may be put into small molds or one large mold and repacked for ripening if packed in a large mold this will serve 15 persons in the small molds or paper cases it will serve 18 persons nestle road pudding americana one small bottle or 16 preserved marron one quart of cream four ounces of sugar four tablespoonfuls of sherry one tablespoonful of vanilla yolks of six eggs put half the cream in a double boiler over the fire when hot add the eggs and sugar beaten until light cook a minute and cool when cold add one small bottle of marron broken into quarters and the syrup from the bottle the sherry and vanilla freeze stirring slowly when frozen stir in the remaining cream whipped to a stiff froth pack in small molds in salt and ice as directed these should freeze three hours at least this will make twelve small molds orange souffle one quart of cream one pint of orange juice one half box of gelatin three quarter pound of sugar yolks of six eggs cover the gelatin with a half cupful of cold water and soak for a half hour add a half cupful of boiling water stir until the gelatin is dissolved and add the sugar and the orange juice beat the yolks of the eggs until very light whip the cream add the uncooked yolks to the orange mixture strain in the gelatin stand the bowl in cold water and stir slowly until the mixture begins to thicken stirring carefully the whipped cream turn it in a mold or an ice cream freezer pack with salt and ice and stand aside three hours to freeze this should not be frozen as hard as ice cream and must not be stirred while freezing make sure however that the gelatin is thoroughly mixed with the other ingredients before putting the mixture into the freezer this will serve twelve people by changing the flavoring using lemon in the place of orange or a pint of strawberry juice or a pint of raspberry and currant juice an endless variety of souffles may be made from this same recipe these may be served plain or with montrose sauce plombier one quart of cream one half pound of jordan almonds one half pound of sugar one half pound of sultana raisins yolks of six eggs blanch the almonds and pound them to a paste or use a half pound of ordinary almond paste put half the cream in a double boiler over the fire add the yolks and sugar beaten to a cream add the almond paste stir until the mixture begins to thicken take from the fire and beat with an egg beater for three minutes strain through a fine sieve and when very cold add the sultanas and the remaining cream freeze turning the dasher very slowly at first and more rapidly toward the end remove the dasher scrape down the sides of the can and pull the cream up making a well in the center fill this well half full with apricot jam cover over with pudding mixture making it smooth repack and stand aside for two hours serve plain or with a cold puree of apricots this will serve twelve persons queen pudding make a strawberry water ice or frozen strawberries pack a three-quart mold in a bucket or tub of ice and salt line the mold with the strawberry ice fill the center with tutti frutti using half recipe put on the lid bind the seam and stand aside for at least two hours when ready to serve turn the pudding from the mold into the center of a large round dish garnish the base with whipped cream pressed through a star tube and garnish the pudding with candied cherries here and there around the base of the whipped cream place a marron glace this will serve fifteen persons ice cream croquettes mold vanilla ice cream with the ordinary pyramid ice cream spoon roll them quickly in grated macaroons and serve on a paper mat iced rice pudding with a compote of oranges for the pudding one half cupful of rice one quart of cream 
one pint of milk two teaspoonfuls of vanilla extract or one half vanilla bean one half pound of sugar yolks of six eggs rub the rice in a dry towel and put it over the fire in a pint of cold water bring to a boil and boil twenty minutes drain add the milk and cook it in a double boiler a half hour while this is boiling whip the cream to a stiff froth and stand it in a cold place until wanted press the rice through a fine sieve and return it to the double boiler beat the yolks of the eggs and the sugar until light stir them into the hot rice and stir and cook about two minutes until the mixture begins to thicken take from the fire add the vanilla and stand aside until very cold when cold freeze turning the dasher rapidly toward the last remove the dasher and stir in the whipped cream scrape down the sides of the can and smooth the pudding put on the lid fasten the hole in the top with a cork put over the top a piece of waxed paper and pack with salt and ice stand aside for at least two or three hours be very careful that the hole in the tub is open to prevent the salt water from overflowing the can for the compote one dozen nice oranges one pound of sugar one half cupful of water one teaspoonful of lemon juice put the sugar and water over the fire to boil wipe down the sides of the pan skim the syrup add the lemon juice and boil until it spins a thread peel the oranges cut them into halves crosswise and with a sharp knife remove the cores dip one piece at a time into the hot syrup and place them on a platter to cool pour over any syrup that may be left this syrup must be thick but not sufficiently thick to harden on the oranges to dish the pudding lift the can from the ice wipe it carefully on the outside wrap the bottom of the mold in a towel dipped in boiling water or hold it half an instant under the cold water spigot then with a limber knife or spatula loosen the pudding from the side of the can and shake it out into the center of a large round plate heap the oranges on top of the pudding making them in a pyramid put the remaining quantity around the base of the pudding pour over the syrup and send to the table this pudding sounds elaborate and troublesome but it is exceedingly palatable and one of the handsomest of all frozen dishes this will serve twenty persons in ice cream stem dishes it will serve twenty four persons sultana roll one and one half quarts of cream one half pound of granulated sugar one half cupful of sultanas four tablespoonfuls of sherry two ounces of shelled pistachio nuts one teaspoonful of almond extract ten drops of green coloring put one pint of cream and the sugar over the fire in a double boiler and stir until the sugar is dissolved take from the fire and when cold add a pint of the remaining cream chop the pistachio nuts very fine or put them through a meat grinder add them to the cream and add the flavoring and coloring and freeze whip the remaining pint of cream to a stiff froth sprinkle the sultanas with sherry and let them stand while you are freezing the pudding when the pudding is frozen remove the dasher and line a long round mold with the pistachio cream if nothing better is at hand use pound baking powder cans and line them to the depth of one inch add the sultanas to the whipped cream and stir in two tablespoonfuls of powdered sugar fill the spaces in the cans with the whipped cream mixture and put another layer of the pistachio cream over the top put on the lids wrap each can in wax paper and put them down into coarse salt and ice to freeze for at least two hours at serving time turn the puddings onto a long platter fill the bottom of the platter with claret or strawberry sauce and send to the table this quantity cut into half inch slices will serve 12 persons sultana pudding one pint of milk one pint of cream six ounces of sugar one cupful of sultanas one teaspoonful of vanilla four tablespoonfuls of sherry if you use it yolks of four eggs put the milk in a double boiler and when hot add the yolks and sugar beaten together stir until this begins to thicken take from the fire add the vanilla and when cold freeze it put the sherry over the sultanas garnish the bottom of a melon mold with the sultanas pack it in coarse ice and salt ready for the frozen pudding remove the dasher from the frozen mixture and stir in the cream that has been whipped to a stiff froth add the remainder of the sultanas and pack at once into the mold put on the lid and fasten as directed in other recipes this may be served plain or with whipped cream 
garnished with sultanas. This will serve eight persons. The Merry Widow Dish a pyramid of vanilla ice cream into a stem individual ice cream glass. Garnish the base of the ice cream with fresh strawberries, dust the cream thickly with toasted pignon nuts, and baste the whole with four tablespoonfuls of claret sauce, flavored with two tablespoonfuls of rum. Tutti Frutti Pudding One pint of milk, one pint of cream, one half pint of mixed candied fruits, four eggs, one cupful of sugar, one teaspoonful of vanilla, two tablespoonfuls of sherry, one tablespoonful of brandy. Put the milk over the fire in a double boiler. Add the yolks of the eggs and the sugar beaten together until light. When the mixture begins to thicken, take it from the fire and stand it aside until perfectly cold. Add all the flavorings. When the mixture is cold, add the cream and partly freeze it. Then add the fruit and freeze to the right consistency. This should be packed at least two hours to ripen. This will serve eight persons. Tutti Frutti, Italian Fashion one half pound of sugar, one pint of water, one pint of cream, one half pint of chopped mixed candied fruits, one teaspoonful of vanilla, four tablespoonfuls of sherry, yolks of six eggs. Pour the sherry over the fruit. Beat the yolks until creamy. Put the sugar and water over the fire. Stir until the sugar is dissolved and boil five minutes. Add the yolks of the eggs. Beat until it again reaches the boiling point. Take from the fire and beat until cold and thick. Add the cream, the fruit, and the vanilla. Freeze as directed on page 7. This is usually served in small ice cream glasses garnished with whipped cream, or may be served plain. In the absence of ice cream glasses, use ordinary punch glasses. This will fill 10 glasses. Lala Rook Fill a lemonade or ice cream glass two-thirds full of vanilla ice cream. Make a little well in the center and fill the space with rum and sherry mixed. Allow four tablespoonfuls of rum and six of sherry to each half dozen cups. Peaches Melba. Dish a helping of vanilla ice cream in the center of the serving plate. Place in the center of the ice cream a whole brandy peach. Press it down into the ice cream, baste over four tablespoonfuls of claret sauce, and serve. Lily and Russell. Cut into halves small, very cold cantaloupes. Remove the seeds, fill the centers of the half melons, with vanilla ice cream and garnish with whipped cream pressed through a small star tube dish the halves on paper mats on a dessert plate and send to the table arrowroot cream one quart of milk six ounces of sugar one level tablespoonful of arrowroot two teaspoonfuls of vanilla moisten the arrowroot with a little cold milk put the remaining milk in a double boiler when hot add the arrowroot and cook ten minutes add the sugar Take from the fire and add the vanilla. When perfectly cold, freeze as directed on page 7. This will serve six persons. English apricot cream. One half pint of apricot jam, one pint of cream, one half pint of milk, two tablespoonfuls of noyau, juice of one lemon. Mix the jam and the cream, then carefully add the noyau and the lemon juice. Press through a fine sieve, add the milk, and freeze as directed on page 7. This will serve six persons frozen custard, one quart of milk, six ounces of sugar, two teaspoonfuls of vanilla, yolks of four eggs. Put the milk in a double boiler, add the yolks of the eggs and the sugar beaten together, and stir until the mixture thickens. Take from the fire, and when cold, add the vanilla. Turn into the freezer and freeze as directed. A little chopped conserved fruit may be added at last when the dasher is removed. Chopped black walnuts may also be added. This will serve six persons. Gelatin ice cream. One quart of milk, one half pint of cream, six ounces of sugar, one tablespoonful of granulated gelatin, two teaspoonfuls of vanilla. Cover the gelatin with a little cold milk and stand it aside for 15 minutes. Put the remaining milk in a double boiler. When scalding hot, add the sugar and the gelatin. Stir until the sugar is dissolved. Take from the fire and when perfectly cold, Add the cream and the vanilla. Freeze as directed on page 7. This will serve six persons. Frozen plum pudding. Two pint cans of condensed milk, one half cupful of seeded raisins, one half pound of sugar, 24 almonds that have been blanched and chopped, two ounces of shredded citron, one quarter pound of candied cherries, two teaspoonfuls of vanilla, 
two tablespoonfuls of sherry one half pint of water yolks of four eggs put milk in a double boiler over the fire and stir until all the milk is thoroughly heated add the yolks of the eggs and the sugar beaten together cook it until it begins to thicken take from the fire and strain when cold add the citron raisins the cherries cut into quarters the almonds vanilla and sherry when this is perfectly cold freeze as directed do not repack or allow the mixture to stand in the freezer more than a half hour serve plain or with montrose sauce one quart of good rich milk may be used in place of the condensed milk this will serve twelve persons charlotte glace make a quart of vanilla ice cream and stir into it a pint of cream whipped to a stiff froth line round stiff paper charlotte boxes with lady fingers fill them with the iced mixture and place them at once in a can or bucket packed in salt and ice to freeze for one or two hours this quantity will fill twelve boxes maple panache fill stem ice cream dishes half full with caramel ice cream on top put a layer of vanilla ice cream smooth it down and dust thickly with toasted pecan nuts chopped fine a pint of each cream will fill six dishes german cherry biscuits fill paper cases half full of pineapple water ice put over a layer of candied cherries chopped then a layer of vanilla ice cream smooth it quickly place a marron glace in the center and garnish the cream with a meringue made from the whites of two eggs and two tablespoonfuls of powdered sugar dust this with grated macaroons and send to the table make the meringue and grate the macaroons before dishing the ice cream a pint of each cream will fill eight cases fruit salad iced make one quart of lemon or orange water ice and stand it aside for at least one or two hours to ripen make a fruit salad from stemmed strawberries sliced bananas cut into tiny bits a few very ripe cherries a grated pineapple if you have it and the pulp of four or five oranges after the water ice is frozen rather hard pack it in a border mold put on the lid or cover and bind the seam with a strip of muslin dipped in paraffin or suet and repack to freeze for three or four hours sweeten the fruit combination if you like add a tablespoon or two of brandy and sherry and stand this on the ice until very cold at serving time turn the mold of water ice onto a round compote dish quickly fill the center with fruit salad garnish the outside with fresh roses or violets and send at once to the table this will serve eight or ten persons at luncheon hoop st jacques make a fruit salad as in preceding recipe make a pint of orange or strawberry ice at serving time fill parfait or ice cream glasses half full of the fruit salad fill the remaining half with water ice smooth it over garnish the top with whipped cream put a maraschino cherry in the center and serve other fruits may be used for the salad this should make 12 tumblers end of chapter 5chapter six of ice creams water ices frozen puddings this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. recording by betty b ice creams water ices frozen puddings by sarah tyson heston roar water ices and sherbets or sorbets a water ice is a mixture of water fruit and sugar frozen without much stirring in fact a water ice can be made in an ordinary tin kettle packed in a bucket if an ice cream freezer is used the stirring should be done occasionally personally i prefer to pack the can put on the lid and fasten the hole with a cork rather than to use the dasher stirring now and then with a paddle if you use the crank turn slowly for a few minutes then allow the mixture to stand for five minutes turn slowly again and again rest and continue this until the water ice is frozen a much longer time is required for freezing water ice than ice cream when the mixture is thoroughly frozen take out the dasher scrape down the sides of the can give the ice a thorough beating with a wooden spoon put the cork in the lid of the can draw the water from the tub repack it with coarse ice and salt cover it with paper and a piece of blanket or burlap and stand aside for two or three hours 
to ripen just as you would ice cream when it is necessary to make water ice every day or two it is best to make a syrup and stand it aside ready for use fruit jellies may be used in the place of fresh fruits allowing one pint of jelly the juice of one lemon and a half pound of sugar to each quart of water when water ice is correctly frozen it has the appearance of a hard wet snow it must not be frothy nor light a sherbet or sorbet is made from the same mixture as a water ice stirred constantly while it is freezing and has a meringue made from the white of one egg and a tablespoonful of powdered sugar stirred in after the dasher is removed apple ice one pound of tart apples one cupful of sugar one pint of water juice of one lemon or lime quarter and core the apples but do not pare them slice them add the water cover and stew until tender about five minutes pass through a sieve add the sugar and lemon juice when cold freeze as directed serve in lemonade glasses at dinner with roasted duck goose or pork this will serve six persons apricot ice one quart can of apricots one half cupful of sugar one pint of water juice of one lemon press the apricots through a sieve add all the other ingredients and serve this is nice served in lemonade glasses for afternoon tea pass sweet wafers this will serve eight persons cherry ice two full quarts of sour cherries one pound of sugar one quart of water stew the cherries in the water for ten minutes and pass through a sieve add the sugar and if you have it two drops of angostura bitters when cold freeze it as directed on page sixty three this will serve ten persons currant water ice one pint of currant juice one pound of sugar one pint of boiling water add the sugar to the water and stir over the fire until it is dissolved boil five minutes take from the fire when cool add the currant juice when cold freeze as directed on page sixty three this will serve six persons currant and raspberry water ice one pint of currant juice one pint of raspberry juice one pint of water three-quarter pound of sugar add the sugar to the water stir until boiling boil five minutes and when cool add the raspberry and currant juices and freeze as directed this will serve six persons in punch glasses eight persons grape water ice one pint of grape juice one quart of water one pound of sugar juice of one lemon boil the sugar and water together for five minutes take from the fire add the lemon juice and skim when cold add the grape juice and freeze as directed if fresh grapes are to be used select muscatels or concords pulp the grapes boil the pulps press them through a sieve and add the skins and the pulps to the sugar and water boil five minutes press as much as possible through a sieve and freeze this will serve eight persons lemon water ice four large lemons one quart of water one and one quarter pounds of sugar grate the yellow rind of two lemons into the sugar add the water stir over the fire until the sugar is dissolved and boil for five minutes strain and stand aside to cool when cold add the juice of the lemons and freeze as directed on page sixty three this will serve six persons ginger water ice six ounces of preserved ginger four lemons one quart of water one pound of sugar put four ounces of the ginger through an ordinary meat grinder and cut the remaining two ounces into fine bits boil the sugar and water together for five minutes and add the lemon juice and ground ginger take from the fire add the bits of ginger and when cold freeze as directed ginger water ice is better for a two-hour stand after it is frozen nice to serve with roasted or braised beef this will serve six persons in small punch glasses eight meal fruit water ice one half pint of grape juice six lemons one orange four tablespoonfuls of sherry one half pound of preserved cherries or pineapple or both mixed one and one half pounds of sugar one quart of water grate the yellow rind of the orange and one lemon into the sugar add the water stir over the fire until the sugar is dissolved 
boil five minutes and strain add the fruit cut into small pieces the juice of the orange and the lemons when cold add the grape juice and sherry and freeze using the dasher do not stir rapidly but stir continuously as slowly as possible when the mixture is frozen remove the dasher and repack the can ripen at least two hours this is one of the nicest of all the water ices and may be served on the top of coupe saint jacques or at dinner in sherbet glasses with roasted veal or beef this will serve ten persons orange water ice twelve large oranges one pound of sugar one quart of water grate the yellow rind from three oranges into the sugar add the water boil five minutes and strain when cold add the orange juice and freeze as directed for water ices this will serve ten persons pomegranate water ice twelve good-sized pomegranates one pint of water one pound of sugar cut the pomegranates into halves remove the seeds carefully from the inside bitter skin press them with a potato masher in the colander allowing the juice to run through into a bowl be careful not to mash the seeds add the sugar to the juice and stir until it is dissolved then add the water cold and freeze this is very nice to serve with a meat course and also nice for the garnish of a fruit salad this will serve six persons pineapple water ice two ripe pineapples or one quart can of grated pineapple one quart of water one and one half pounds of sugar juice of two lemons pare the pineapples remove the eyes and grate the fruit into the water add the sugar and lemon juice boil five minutes and when cold freeze as directed on page sixty three this will serve ten persons strawberry water ice one quart of strawberries one pound of sugar one quart of water juice of two lemons add the sugar and the lemon juice to the stemmed strawberries let them stand one hour mash them through a colander and then if you like strain through a fine sieve add the water and freeze as directed on page sixty three this will serve eight persons raspberry water ice one quart of red raspberries one pound of sugar one quart of water juice of two lemons add the sugar and the lemon juice to the raspberries stir and stand aside one hour press through a sieve add the water and freeze as directed on page sixty three this will serve eight persons roman punch make one quart of lemon water ice when ready to serve fill it into small punch glasses make a little well in the center and fill the space with good jamaican rum this will serve eight persons sour sop sherbet or ice squeeze the juice from one large sour sop strain and add four tablespoonfuls of sugar boiled a moment with four tablespoonfuls of water freeze as directed on page sixty three a quart of sour sop when frozen will serve six persons cranberry sherbet one pint of cranberries one half pound of sugar one half pint of water add the water to the cranberries cover bring to a boil press through a colander return them to the fire add the sugar and stir until the sugar dissolves take from the fire and when cold freeze stirring slowly all the while serve with the meat course at dinner this will serve eight persons cucumber sorbet two large cucumbers two tart apples one pint of water one teaspoonful of sugar one half teaspoonful of salt one tablespoonful of gelatin one saltspoonful of black pepper juice of one lemon peel the cucumbers cut them into halves and remove the seeds dissolve the gelatin in half a cupful of hot water grate the flesh of the cucumbers grate the apples add them to the cucumbers and add all the other ingredients freeze as you would ordinary sherbet serve in tiny glasses with boiled cod or halibut this will fill eight small stem glasses gooseberry sorbet one half pint of gooseberry jam four tablespoonfuls of sugar one pint of water juice of one lemon mix all the ingredients together and freeze turning slowly all the while serve in small glasses this is usually served at christmas dinner with goose this will serve six persons orange sherbet one pint of orange juice two tablespoonfuls of gelatin three-quarter pound of sugar one pint of water 
Cover the gelatin with an extra half cupful of cold water and soak for a half hour. Add the sugar to the pint of water and stir it over the fire until it boils. Add the grated yellow rind of two oranges and the juice. Strain through a fine sieve and freeze, turning the freezer slowly all the while. Remove the dasher, stir in a meringue made from the white of one egg, and repack to ripen for an hour at least. This will serve six persons. Mint Sherbet Two dozen stalks of spearmint, one half pound of sugar, one quart of water, juice of three lemons. Strip the leaves from the stalks of the mint, chop them to a pulp, and rub them with the sugar. Add the water, bring to a boil, boil five minutes, and when cold, add three drops of green coloring and the juice of the lemons. Strain and freeze, turning slowly all the while. Serve at dinner with mutton or lamb. This will serve six persons in small stem glasses. Eight persons. Tomato sorbet or sherbet. One quart can or twelve fresh tomatoes. One slice of onion, one blade of mace one saltspoonful of celery seed, one pint of water, one teaspoonful of salt, one teaspoonful of paprika, one tablespoonful of gelatin, juice of one lemon, a dash of cayenne. Add all the ingredients to the tomatoes, stir over the fire until the mixture reaches the boiling point. Boil five minutes and strain through a fine sieve. When this is cold, freeze according to the rule for sherbets, turning slowly all the time. Serve in punch glasses at dinner as an accompaniment to roasted beef or venison or saddle of mutton. If fresh tomatoes are used, simply cut them into halves and cook them without peeling. This will fill nine or ten punch glasses. End of chapter six. Chapter seven of Ice Creams water ices frozen puddings this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by betty b ice creams water ices frozen puddings by sarah tyson heston roar frozen fruits frozen fruits are mixed and frozen the same as water ices that is they are only stirred occasionally while freezing but the fruit must be mashed or it will form little balls of ice through a partly frozen mixture. The only difference between a water ice and a frozen fruit is that the mixture is not strained and more fruit and less water is used. If canned fruits are used and these recipes followed, cut down the sugar. Cream may be used in place of water with sub-acid fruits. Frozen apricots. One quart of apricots, two tablespoonfuls of gelatin, one cupful of sugar, one pint of cream. Drain the apricots from the can, mash them through a colander. Add the sugar and stir until the sugar is dissolved. Cover the gelatin with half a cupful of cold water and soak for half an hour. Stand it over hot water, stir until dissolved, add it to the apricot mixture and freeze. When frozen, remove the dasher and stir in the cream whipped to a stiff froth. Repack and stand aside two hours to ripen. This will serve ten persons. Frozen bananas. Twelve large ripe bananas. One pound of sugar, one half pint of water, one pint of cream, juice of two lemons. Peel the bananas and mash them through a colander. Add the sugar to the water and boil five minutes. When cold, add the lemon juice and the bananas. Put the mixture into a freezing can. Stir slowly until frozen. Remove the dasher and stir in carefully the cream whipped to a stiff froth. This will serve 10 or 12 persons. Frozen chocolate. One quart of milk, three ounces of chocolate, two thirds cupful of sugar, one pint of water, one half pint of cream whipped, one teaspoonful of vanilla. Grate the chocolate and put it in a double boiler with the water and sugar. Let the water in the surrounding boiler boil 15 minutes. Beat well and add the milk. Stir until thoroughly mixed and the milk is very hot. Take from the fire, add the vanilla, and when the mixture is cold, freeze, turning slowly all the while. Serve in chocolate cups with the whipped cream on top. This will fill nine chocolate cups. Frozen pineapple. Two large pineapples, one quart of water, one pound of sugar, juice of one lemon, 
peel the pineapples and grate them add the sugar to the water stir until the sugar is dissolved boil five minutes and cool add the pineapple and lemon juice and freeze turning the freezer slowly this will serve eight or ten persons frozen coffee one quart of cold water one half pound of sugar six heaping tablespoonfuls of finely ground coffee one half pint of cream put the coffee in the water in a double boiler over the fire and let the water in the surrounding boiler boil for at least twenty minutes after it begins to boil strain through two thicknesses of cheesecloth add the sugar stir until the sugar is dissolved and stand aside until very cold add the cream and the unbeaten white of one egg freeze turning the freezer slowly this should be the consistency of a soft mush and very light serve in coffee cups either plain or with whipped cream on top this will serve six persons frozen peaches number one two pounds of very ripe peaches six peach kernels one pint of water one half pound of sugar juice of one lemon crack the kernels chop them fine add them to the sugar add the water and boil five minutes strain and stand aside to cool pare the peaches press them through a colander add them to the cold syrup turn into the freezer and stir slowly until the mixture is frozen if the peaches are colorless add a few drops of cochineal before freezing this will serve eight persons frozen peaches number two one quart of peach pulp one pint of cream three quarter pound of sugar juice of one lemon add the lemon juice to the peach pulp add the sugar and stand aside stirring every now and then until the sugar is dissolved freeze the mixture stirring slowly when frozen remove the dasher and fold in the cream whipped to a stiff froth this is one of the nicest ices for afternoon or evening collations this will serve eight persons in stem glasses ten persons frozen raspberries one quart of raspberries three quarter pound of sugar one pint of water juice of one lemon add the sugar and the lemon juice to the berries mash them with a potato masher let them stand one hour add the water and freeze this will serve eight persons frozen watermelon scrape the center from a very ripe watermelon chop quickly and press through a colander to each pint of this juice add a half cupful of sugar and four tablespoonfuls of sherry freeze until it is like wet snow serve in glasses one pint will fill three stem glasses frozen strawberries one quart of very ripe strawberries one pound of sugar one pint of water juice of one lemon add the sugar and lemon juice to the berries let them stand one hour mash the berries through a colander add the water and freeze turning the dasher constantly but very slowly this will serve eight persons frappe a frappe is nothing more nor less than a water ice partly frozen for instance cafe frappe is a partly frozen coffee the mixture looks like wet snow a champagne frappe is champagne packed in salt and ice and the bottles agitated until the champagne is partly frozen parfait a parfait is a dessert made from frozen whipped cream sweetened and flavored an old-fashioned parfait was not frozen in an ice cream freezer the mixture was packed at once into a mold the mold packed in salt and ice to freeze for two or three hours to be perfect the mixture must be frozen on the outside to the depth of one and a half to two inches with a soft center the quick parfait given under frozen desserts is now in general use End of chapter 7「Chapter 8 of Ice Creams, Water Ices, Frozen Puddings」This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jennifer Painter Ice Creams, Water Ices, Frozen Puddings by Sarah Tyson Heston Rohrer Chapter 8 Moose a mousse is a parfait frozen to the centre. These mixtures are not smooth like ice cream, but are frozen in crystals, and to be exactly correct, should look like moss when cut. Burnt almond mousse. One quarter of a pound of Jordan almonds, two ounces of almond paste, 
two thirds cupful of powdered sugar, one pint of thick cream, one teaspoonful of almond extract. Whip the cream to a very stiff froth. Blanch, toast and grind the almonds, putting them through an ordinary meat grinder. Rub them with the almond paste, adding the extract and about two tablespoonfuls of water or sherry. Sprinkle the sugar over the whipped cream and then fold in the nut mixture. Pack at once into a mould, put on the lid, fasten the seam with a strip of muslin dipped in paraffin or melted suet, and pack in coarse salt and ice to freeze for two or three hours. Serve plain or dusted with chopped almonds. This will serve six persons. Coffee mousse. One pint of cream, half a cupful of powdered sugar, two tablespoonfuls of coffee extract. Whip the cream to a stiff froth, sprinkle over the sugar, add the coffee extract, and, when well mixed, pack and freeze. This will serve six persons. Egyptian mousse. One half cupful of rice, one tablespoonful of gelatin, two thirds cupful of sugar, one quarter pound of dates, one half pint of milk, one pint of cream, one teaspoonful of vanilla. Wash the rice, throw it into boiling water, boil rapidly 20 minutes, drain, add the milk and cook in a double boiler 15 minutes. Add the sugar, the gelatin that has been moistened in cold water and the dates chopped. Take from the fire, add the vanilla and when the mixture is cold, fold in carefully the whipped cream. Freeze as directed in a mould and serve with cold quince jelly sauce. This will serve 10 persons. Duchess mousse. Four eggs, half cupful of sugar, one pint of cream, one teaspoonful of vanilla, five drops of cochineal. Beat the yolks of the eggs and the sugar until very, very light. Fold in the whites of the eggs and the flavouring. Stand the bowl in a pan of boiling water and beat continuously until the ingredients are hot. Take from the fire and beat constantly for 10 minutes. When this is cool, fold in the cream whipped to a stiff froth, pack and freeze. Serve with quince jelly sauce poured over the mousse. This will serve eight persons. Pistachio mousse. Four ounces of pistachio nuts, one tablespoonful of gelatin, one pint of water, one pint of cream, half a pound of sugar, one teaspoonful of almond extract, three drops of green colouring. Blanch the pistachio nuts and put them through a meat grinder. Boil the sugar and water for five minutes. When cool, add the colouring, the pistachio nuts and the gelatin moistened in a little cold water. When this is cold, fold in the cream beaten to a stiff froth and freeze in a mould as directed. If this is not too well mixed, the cream will separate, which makes the handsomer dessert. When the mousse is turned from the mould, it will then have a solid white base with a rather green, beautiful, transparent mixture at the top. This will serve 10 persons. Rice mousse with a compote of mandarins. Half a cupful of rice, one tablespoonful of gelatin, two thirds cupful of sugar, one pint of milk, one pint of cream one quarter pound of candied cherries, one teaspoonful of vanilla. Wash and boil the rice in water for 20 minutes. Drain, put it in a double boiler with the milk and sugar, stir until the sugar is dissolved, cover the kettle and cook slowly for 20 minutes. Press through a sieve, add the vanilla and the gelatin covered with cold water. When this is cold, Fold in the cream, whipped to a stiff froth. Pack and freeze. I usually freeze this in the ordinary ice cream can. Simply remove the dasher, put in the mixture and pack it to freeze for two or three hours. 
While this is ripening, separate the mandarins into carpels. Boil together for five minutes, one pound of sugar, a half pint of water, and the juice of one lemon. Take from the fire, add at once the carpels, stir lightly until they are thoroughly covered with the syrup, and stand aside until very cold. At serving time, wipe the outside of the freezing can with a warm towel, turn the mousse into the centre of a round dish, heap the carpels around the base and over the top in the form of a pyramid, pour over the syrup and send at once to the table. This will serve 12 persons. End of chapter 8「Chapter Nine of Ice Creams, Water Ices, Frozen Puddings. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jennifer Painter. Ice Creams, Water Ices, Frozen Puddings by Sarah Tyson Heston Rohrer. Chapter Nine. Sauces for ice creams. Hot chocolate sauce. Half a cupful of cream or condensed milk, two ounces of chocolate, one cupful of sugar, one teaspoonful of vanilla. Put all the ingredients into a saucepan and stir over the fire until they reach boiling point. Boil until the mixture slightly hardens when dropped into cold water. Add the vanilla, turn at once into the sauce boat and send to the table. This must be sufficiently thin to dip nicely over the ice cream. Maple sauce. One cupful of sugar, one teaspoonful of lemon juice, one cupful of water, one teaspoonful of maple flavoring. Put half the sugar in an iron saucepan and stand it over the fire until it melts and browns. Add hastily the water, the remaining sugar and the lemon juice and boil for about two minutes. Take from the fire and add the flavoring. This may be served plain or with chopped fruit or nuts added. Claret sauce. Boil one cupful of sugar and a half cupful of water with a salt spoonful of cream of tartar for five minutes. Take from the fire and add one cupful of claret and stand aside until icy cold. Nut sauce. One cupful of sugar, half a cupful of chopped nuts, one cupful of water, one teaspoonful of caramel, two teaspoonfuls of sherry. Boil the sugar and water with a salt spoonful of cream of tartar or a teaspoonful of lemon juice for five minutes. Take from the fire and add all the other ingredients and stand aside to cool. Montrose sauce. Half a tablespoonful of granulated gelatin, quarter of a cupful of sugar, half a cupful of milk, one pint of cream, two tablespoonfuls of brandy, one teaspoonful of vanilla, the yolks of three eggs. Cover the gelatin with milk, let it soak a half hour and put it with the milk in a double boiler over the fire. Beat the yolks of the eggs and the sugar together, add them to the hot milk, stir about one minute until the mixture begins to thicken, take from the fire and when cold, add the vanilla and the brandy and if you like it, four tablespoonfuls of sherry. Stand this aside until very, very cold. Orange sauce. Half a pint of orange juice, half a pint of water, half a cup full of sugar, one tablespoonful of arrowroot, whites of three eggs. Add the sugar to the water and when boiling hot, add the arrowroot moistened. Beat the whites of the eggs to a stiff froth. Add gradually the hot mixture, beating all the while. Add the orange juice, beat again. Turn it into a sauce boat and stand aside until very cold. Walnut sauce. Melt maple sugar with a little water 
and add to each cupful of syrup a half cupful of chopped black walnuts. Maple syrup may also be used by adding half the quantity of boiling water and the nuts. End of chapter 9「In arranging this matter, I have made an earnest effort to be of service to the housewife without or with one maid, as well as to those who are fortunate enough to have trained help. It is perhaps unnecessary to say that elaborate refreshments are entirely out of place at small afternoon or evening cards. An ice with a wafer or cake and coffee served on card tables are sufficient. A salad with bread and butter sandwiches and coffee or a salad sandwich with coffee make a nice combination. Hot dishes, even light entrees, seem to call for a dessert or another course and coffee. For wedding and other large receptions, serve a greater variety of dishes. Jellied meats, boned chicken, salads, sandwiches, ices, cakes, and coffee. In winter, creamed dishes may be served in paper cases on the same plate with salads and other cold dishes. Serve coffee in small cups after refreshments. Many so-called elaborate dishes are quite easily made and entrees are frequently quite as good when re-warmed. Chicken croquettes may be made and fried early in the day ready to re-warm on brown paper in a baking pan in a hot oven 10 minutes before serving time. Sandwiches will keep perfectly well for several hours if wrapped in a damp towel and closed in a tin bread box. Salad sandwiches are better, however, if made as near serving time as possible. If a large reception is to be given, even with good help, Prepare as many dishes as possible the day before to avoid confusion on the fixed day. Refreshments for small affairs need not necessarily cost much time or money. A half cup full of chopped leftover steak, a couple of chops or a bit of chicken or a box of sardines make a good foundation for moulds of tomato jelly. Served with bread and butter sandwiches and coffee, they are quite sufficient for afternoon or evening cards. Many of the ices in this book are new and attractive. The new sorbets are liked by those who are always striving for a change. Many are old and reliable. At large affairs, serve from the dining table. At card parties, large and small, serve on the card tables using a small tea cloth on each table. At afternoon teas, serve from the tea table in the drawing room. At lawn parties, serve from a large table on the lawn. Small tables may be placed here and there for the convenience of guests. Every day afternoon tea may be served, in the summer on the porch, in the winter in the living room or library. If two dishes only are served, be sure that they harmonise with each other and with the manner of service. Suitable and hygienic combinations are always to be considered, but the aesthetic side seems to me of equal importance. Coffee for large home affairs. Allow 11 ounces of finely ground coffee to each gallon of water. This will serve 25 persons with one coffee cup each and 40 persons with after dinner cups. The better way to make a large quantity of coffee without an urn is to purchase a new wash boiler. Wash it and put in the required quantity of water, cold. Weigh the coffee, 
and divide it into half pound lots. Put each lot in a small cheesecloth bag. Tie the top of the bag, allowing room for the coffee to swell. Put the bags in the water an hour before serving time. Bring slowly to a boil and then boil rapidly for five minutes. Remove the bags at once, pressing them well. Keep the coffee very hot until it is all served. Coffee is not spoiled by being kept at boiling point for some time if the grounds are removed. End of chapter 10 Chapter 11 of Ice Creams, Water Ices, Frozen Puddings This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jennifer Painter Ice Creams, Water Ices, Frozen Puddings by Sarah Tyson Heston Rohrer Chapter 11 Soups Bouillon. Two pounds of chopped lean beef, two quarts of cold water, one small onion, twelve cloves, two tablespoonfuls of sugar, two teaspoonfuls of salt, twelve whole peppercorns, a dash of cayenne, juice of half a lemon. Put the sugar in the soup kettle, add the onion sliced, and shake until the onion is thoroughly browned, and the sugar almost burned. Add the meat, shake it for a moment, and add the water. Cover, bring to boiling point, and put over a slow fire to simmer for two hours. Add all the seasonings, and simmer one hour longer. Strain through a colander, pressing the meat. Beat the whites of two eggs slightly, then whisk them into the warm bouillon, and add the juice of the lemon. Bring to boiling point, boil rapidly five minutes, let it stand a moment, and strain through two thicknesses of cheesecloth. This should stand until it is perfectly cold, so that every particle of fat may be removed from the surface. Reheat to serve. This will serve ten persons, using ordinary bouillon cups. Clam bouillon. Fifty large clams, two quarts of water, twelve whole peppercorns, half a teaspoonful of celery seed. Wash and scrub the clams thoroughly. Put them, a few at a time, in the soup kettle, the bottom of which has been covered with a pint of boiling water. Boil rapidly, take the clams out with a skimmer and put in another lot, and so continue until all the clams have been cooked. Remove them from the shells, saving all the liquor. Chop and return them, with the liquor and remaining water, to the soup kettle. Simmer gently a half hour, then add the peppercorns crushed and the celery seed. Cover the kettle, take it from the fire and allow it to stand until perfectly cold. Strain through two thicknesses of cheesecloth. Reheat to serve. This will serve 15 persons. Bellevue bouillon. One quart of plain or chicken bouillon. One quart of clam bouillon. Half a pint of cream. Paprika. This is one of the most elegant of all bouillons. Heat the bouillons separately. Mix them at the last minute. Pour at once into heated cups. Put a tablespoonful of whipped cream on the top of each cup. Garnish with a dusting of paprika and send to the table. This will serve ten persons. In a pinch, twelve. Chicken bouillon. One four-pound fowl, three quarts of water, one onion, two tablespoonfuls of sugar, one teaspoonful of salt, one bay leaf, one saltspoonful of celery seed, or one half cupful of chopped celery, one saltspoonful of black pepper, Draw the chicken and cut it up as for a fricassee. Scald and skin the feet and crack them thoroughly with your cleaver knife. Put the sugar in a soup kettle, add the onion sliced, 
shake over a quick fire until brown, add the chicken and the water, bring to boiling point, and skim. Simmer gently for two hours. Add all the seasonings, simmer one hour longer, and strain. Add the juice of half a lemon and the whites of two eggs, slightly beaten. Boil rapidly five minutes and strain through two thicknesses of cheesecloth. Reheat to serve. This may be used in place of beef bouillon with the clam broth for Bellevue bouillon. This will serve 12 persons. Oyster bouillon. 50 fat oysters, 2 quarts of water, 12 whole peppercorns, 12 whole allspice, one and a half teaspoonfuls of salt. Drain and wash the oysters. Throw them at once in a hot kettle, shake until the gills have curled, cover the kettle and simmer gently for 15 minutes. Drain again, this time saving the liquor. Return it to the kettle with the peppercorns and allspice, crushed, and water. Chop the oysters with a silver knife, put them back in the kettle, simmer gently a half hour and add the salt. Strain through two thicknesses of cheesecloth. Reheat and serve with whipped cream on top of each cup. This serves 15 persons. Tomato puree a la Rora. One quart can of tomatoes, half a pint of cream, one quart of chicken bouillon, two tablespoonfuls of butter, two tablespoonfuls of arrowroot, one bay leaf, one blade of mace, one onion, one teaspoonful of salt, one teaspoonful of paprika. Add the onion, paprika, mace and bay leaf to the tomatoes. Boil rapidly five minutes. Moisten the arrowroot with three or four tablespoonfuls of cold water, add it to the hot tomato, boil ten minutes and press through a sieve. Add the chicken bouillon, boil ten minutes, add the butter and, when the butter is thoroughly dissolved, turn at once into cups. Put a tablespoonful of whipped cream on top of each and serve. This will serve ten persons. Glaze. Glaze is absolutely necessary for fine cooking, either for the browning of sweetbreads, birds or chickens. Cover a half box of gelatin with a half cup full of cold water to soak for an hour. Put one quart of good bouillon, chicken or beef, over the fire and boil it rapidly until reduced to a pint. Add the gelatin. As soon as the gelatin is dissolved, Strain the mixture. Put four tablespoonfuls of sugar into an iron saucepan. Stir until it is browned. Then add to it slowly the hot glaze. Stir until it is thoroughly melted. Turn it into a china or granite receptacle and stand away to cool. Keep this in the refrigerator and use it according to directions. End of chapter 11 Chapter 12 of Ice Creams, Water Ices, Frozen Puddings. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Betty B. Ice Creams, Water Ices, Frozen Puddings by Sarah Tyson Heston Rohrer. Sweetbreads. Sweetbreads a la creme. Number one. Two pairs of calves' sweetbreads one can of mushrooms, one pint of milk, four level tablespoonfuls of butter, four level tablespoonfuls of flour, one level teaspoonful of salt, one saltspoonful of white pepper. Wash the sweetbreads and trim them. Throw them in a saucepan of boiling water and simmer gently for one hour. Drain and throw them in cold water. The water in which they were boiled may be used for stock. When they are thoroughly cold, remove the membrane and pick them into small pieces. Rub the butter and flour together in a saucepan, add the milk, stir until boiling, add the mushrooms, chopped fine, the sweetbreads, salt, and pepper. Stir until it again reaches the boiling point. Cover and stand over hot water for 20 minutes. Serve in ramekin dishes, 
pate shells or paper cases this will fill twelve cases or fourteen pate shells sweetbreads a la creme number two one pound of fresh mushrooms two pairs of calves sweetbreads one half pint of milk four level tablespoonfuls of butter four level tablespoonfuls of flour one teaspoonful of salt one saltspoonful of white pepper wash and stem the mushrooms do not peel them with a silver knife cut them into slices put half the butter in a saucepan add the mushrooms and half the milk and the salt and pepper cover the saucepan and stew slowly a half hour rub the remaining butter and flour together drain the liquor from the mushrooms add it with the rest of the milk to the butter and flour stir until boiling add the mushrooms and sweetbreads that have been boiled and picked apart cover the saucepan stand it over hot water or use a double boiler pushing the boiler to the back of the stove for twenty to thirty minutes the saucepan must be kept closely covered or the aroma of the mushrooms will be lost this will fill sixteen cases or fourteen pate shells or alone it will serve twelve persons sweetbreads a la bordelaise one pair of calves sweetbreads one half pint of stock one onion one bay leaf one half teaspoonful of salt one can of mushrooms one teaspoonful of browning or kitchen bouquet one saltspoonful of white pepper two level tablespoonfuls of butter two level tablespoonfuls of flour wash the sweetbreads put them in a saucepan add the bay leaf onion and one pint of cold water bring to boiling point and simmer gently one hour save the water in which they were boiled throw the sweetbreads into cold water remove the membrane and pick them apart put the butter and flour in a saucepan when thoroughly mixed add a half pint of stock in which the sweetbreads were boiled stir until boiling add the mushrooms drained and the seasoning bring to boiling point and push to the back of the fire for ten minutes skim off any butter that comes to the surface add the sweetbreads cook gently ten minutes longer and serve in either pate cases ramekin dishes or paper cases this will serve eight persons baked sweetbreads two pairs of calves sweetbreads one can of french peas three tablespoonfuls of butter two tablespoonfuls of glaze one teaspoonful of salt one saltspoonful of pepper wash the sweetbreads and soak them in cold water cut them apart and trim them neatly sprinkle the bottom of a baking pan with a chopped onion put the sweetbreads on top dust them lightly with salt and pepper baste them with one tablespoonful of the butter melted and run them in a quick oven to bake for twenty minutes then brush them thoroughly with glaze and bake them ten minutes longer drain wash and heat the peas add the remaining butter and season them with salt and pepper put the peas in the bottom of the serving dish dish the sweetbreads in them and send at once to the table these may also be served in individual dishes cutting the sweetbreads in small pieces so they may be eaten with a fork they will serve from four to six people the throat sweetbread may be cut into halves but as a rule one sweetbread is served to each person lambs sweetbreads in paper cases eight lambs sweetbreads one half box of gelatin one pint of beef stock or chicken bouillon one can of peas one head of celery two level tablespoonfuls of butter two level tablespoonfuls of flour one half pint of milk one lemon hearts of lettuce yolks of two eggs salt and pepper wash the sweetbreads put them in a saucepan cover with boiling water add two tablespoonfuls of vinegar and a sliced onion cook gently for three quarters of an hour drain put them in a baking pan brush them with butter add a few tablespoonfuls of glaze or stock put over three or four slices of bacon and cook in the oven a half hour basting three or four times rub the butter and flour together add the milk stir until boiling add two tablespoonfuls of the soaked gelatin a half teaspoonful of salt and a little white pepper take from the fire and add hastily the beaten yolks of the eggs cover the bottom of a cold baking pan with muffin rings put one sweetbread into each muffin ring when the sauce is a little cool cover the sweetbreads thoroughly filling the rings quite full stand these away overnight in a cold place dissolve the remaining gelatin in the hot bouillon season 
add the lemon juice and stand it aside overnight at serving time remove the contents from the rings and place them in paper cases of the same size turn the clear aspic out onto a towel and cut it in pretty shapes decorate the top of the cases with this aspic placing a sprig of green in the center drain and press the cold peas through a sieve and season them with salt and pepper put this pulp in a pastry bag with a star tube and decorate the top of each mold serve it once with mayonnaise passed in a boat another way is to fill the bottom of the paper cases with finely chopped celery mixed with mayonnaise and put the sweetbreads on top omitting the peas if made well these are exceedingly handsome one ring will be served to each person sweetbreads a la newburg two pairs of calves sweetbreads one can of mushrooms four hard-boiled yolks of eggs one half pint of milk two level tablespoonfuls of butter one tablespoonful of flour one half teaspoonful of salt one saltspoonful of white pepper one half saltspoonful of grated nutmeg a dash of cayenne cook the sweetbreads as directed in first recipe when cold pick them apart rejecting the membrane rub the butter and flour together add the milk stir until boiling and add this slowly to the mashed yolks of the eggs work and stir until you have a perfectly smooth paste press it through a fine sieve add the salt pepper mushrooms and sweetbreads stand over hot water for twenty minutes until thoroughly hot add if you use it four tablespoonfuls of sherry and serve this will serve ten persons end of chapter twelve chapter thirteen of ice creams water ices frozen puddings this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Betty B. Ice Creams, Water Ices, Frozen Puddings by Sarah Tyson Heston Rohr. Shellfish Dishes Deviled Crabs 12 crabs or 1 pint of crab flake 4 hard-boiled eggs 2 level tablespoonfuls of butter two tablespoonfuls of soft bread crumbs one tablespoonful of flour one teaspoonful of salt one saltspoonful of grated nutmeg one teaspoonful of onion juice one half pint of milk a dash of cayenne chop the whites of the hard-boiled eggs very very fine put the yolks through a sieve rub the butter and flour together and add the milk stir until boiling take from the fire and add the bread crumbs and the eggs Add all the seasoning to the crab flake, mix the two together, and fill at once into the shells. The shells must be quite full so that there will be no danger of the fat being held in the shell. Dip the shells in egg, then cover them quickly with bread crumbs. It is well to egg and bread crumb the upper side again. In fact, both dippings may be on the upper sides, leaving the shells red underneath. Put these in a frying basket and fry for a minute in hot deep fat serve one to each person this quantity should fill eight shells crab backs a la caracas one dozen crabs or six backs and a pint of crab flake one teaspoonful of salt one teaspoonful of onion juice a dash of cayenne add the seasoning to the crab flakes and mix without breaking the flakes fill the mixture into the backs put a teaspoonful of butter on the top of each sprinkle lightly with crumbs and bake in a quick oven twenty minutes crab meat a la dewey one pint of crab flake two tablespoonfuls of butter two tablespoonfuls of flour one teaspoonful of salt one red and one green pepper one half pint of chicken stock or milk two tablespoonfuls of sherry yolks of two eggs drop the peppers into hot fat just a moment and rub off the skin remove the seeds and chop the flesh fine Put this, with the butter, in a saucepan and shake over the fire until the peppers are soft. Add the flour, mix, and add the stock or milk. Stir until boiling. Add the salt and pepper and the crab flakes. Do not stir, but heat slowly over hot water. When hot, add the yolks of the eggs, beaten with two tablespoonfuls of cream. Heat again just a moment, being careful not to curdle the eggs, and serve on toast. This dish is very nice when made in a chafing dish and will serve six people. Lobster Cutlets 
one pint of lobster meat two level tablespoonfuls of butter four level tablespoonfuls of flour one half pint of milk one teaspoonful of salt one teaspoonful of onion juice one saltspoonful of white pepper one half saltspoonful of grated nutmeg yolk of one egg a dash of cayenne chop the boiled lobster rather fine with a silver knife and add to it all the seasoning rub the butter and flour together in a saucepan add the milk stir until you have a smooth thick paste add the yolk of the egg cook a moment longer add the lobster and turn out to cool when cold form into cutlet shaped croquettes dip in egg roll in bread crumbs and fry in deep hot fat put a small claw in the end of each cutlet to represent the bone serve with these either cream sauce or sauce tartare this quantity should make eight cutlets lobster newberg make this precisely the same as crab's newberg using one pint of boiled lobster meat cut the lobster in cubes of about one inch purchase one large or two small lobsters oyster croquettes fifty fat oysters four level tablespoonfuls of flour two level tablespoonfuls of butter one tablespoonful of chopped parsley one teaspoonful of salt one teaspoonful of onion juice one half saltspoonful of nutmeg one saltspoonful of white pepper yolks of two eggs drain and wash the oysters throw them into a hot kettle shake until the gills curl and the liquid boils boil five minutes and drain saving the liquor there should be a half cupful of liquor chop the oysters and add them to the liquor rub the butter and flour together add the oysters and liquor stir until the mixture reaches boiling point and push to the back of the stove where it will cook for ten minutes add all the seasoning and the yolks of the eggs cook just a minute and turn out to cool this must stand either overnight or must be placed directly on the ice for at least four hours when cold form into small cylinder shaped croquettes dip in egg and bread crumbs and fry in deep hot fat this quantity will make one dozen good sized cylinders end of chapter thirteen chapter fourteen of ice creams water ices frozen puddings this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by betty b ice creams water ices frozen puddings by sarah tyson heston roar poultry and game dishes chicken croquettes one four pound chicken one half pint of milk two level tablespoonfuls of butter four level tablespoonfuls of flour two teaspoonfuls of salt two teaspoonfuls of onion juice two tablespoonfuls of chopped parsley one saltspoonful of grated nutmeg one saltspoonful of white pepper a dash of cayenne draw truss the chicken put it into boiling water boil it rapidly for ten minutes and let it simmer until tender when cold remove the meat rejecting the bones and skin chop the meat with a chopping knife do not put it through the meat grinder when fine add all the seasoning and mix thoroughly put the milk in a saucepan over the fire and add the butter and flour rubbed together stir and cook until you have a smooth paste add the chicken mix thoroughly and turn out to cool when cold form into croquettes dip in an egg beaten with a tablespoonful of water roll in dry bread crumbs and fry in deep hot fat serve plain or with french peas this will make thirteen large croquettes one pair of thoroughly cooked sweetbreads may be chopped with the chicken or you may add a pair of parboiled calves brains this increases quantity and makes the croquettes more creamy this should make sixteen large cylinders or pyramids serving sixteen persons the meat from the chicken after it is chopped should measure one quart any other meat may be substituted for chicken but could not be used of course for an elegant affair chicken a la creme the white meat of one cooked chicken one pair of calves sweetbreads one can of mushrooms four level tablespoonfuls of butter four level tablespoonfuls of flour one pint of milk one teaspoonful of salt one saltspoonful of white pepper ten drops of onion juice yolks of two eggs cut the chicken into cubes of a half inch 
boil the sweetbreads and pick them apart rejecting the membrane drain and wash the mushrooms cut them into halves and mix them with the sweetbread and chicken rub the butter and flour together and add the milk when boiling add salt pepper onion juice and meat stand this over hot water in a covered saucepan for twenty minutes add the yolks of the eggs slightly beaten and bring just to boiling point served in ramekins or paper cases this is sufficient for fifteen persons served as a supper or luncheon dish alone twelve persons chicken a la king the white meat of one chicken one half can of mushrooms one green pepper one third pint of milk one half teaspoonful of salt two level tablespoonfuls of butter two level tablespoonfuls of flour one saltspoonful of white pepper two tablespoonfuls of sherry drop the pepper into hot fat for a moment to remove the skin then chop it very fine put the butter in a saucepan or chafing dish add the pepper stir until the pepper is soft add the flour mix and add the milk stir until boiling and add the salt cut the meat into pieces an inch square add them to the hot sauce add the mushrooms sliced and when hot add the wine and serve this will serve four or five persons boudin a la reine one pint of chopped cooked chicken one half can of mushrooms one can of peas two eggs one half cupful of bread crumbs one half cupful of chicken stock one teaspoonful of salt one saltspoonful of pepper brush ordinary timbal cups lightly with butter put a mushroom in the center of the bottom and around the edge a ring of peas put the stock and bread over the fire and when boiling add the chicken and seasonings stir until it reaches the boiling point take from the fire and add the eggs well beaten put this carefully in the cups cover the top with oiled paper stand the cups in a shallow pan partly filled with hot water and cook in the oven about twenty minutes until the contents are set in the center heat the remaining quantity of peas and season them with salt and pepper turn the boudin on a plate surround them with the hot peas and send them at once to the table this will serve eight persons these may also be served with plain sauce or with sauce bechamel sauce bechamel two level tablespoonfuls of butter two level tablespoonfuls of flour one half cupful of chicken stock one half cupful of milk one half teaspoonful of salt one saltspoonful of pepper yolk of one egg rub the butter and flour together add the liquids stir until boiling add the salt and pepper stir add the yolk of an egg well beaten pass through a fine sieve and use at once chicken timbal the white meat of one chicken one half pint of soft white bread crumbs one half cupful of milk one teaspoonful of salt one saltspoonful of white pepper the whites of five eggs put the raw meat of the chicken twice through the meat chopper then put it in a mortar and pound it to a paste or work it in a bowl with a wooden spoon boil the bread and milk stirring constantly when this is cold add the salt pepper and four tablespoonfuls of cream work it gradually into the chicken meat this must be a perfectly smooth paste add the unbeaten whites of two eggs when they are thoroughly incorporated fold in the well-beaten whites of the three eggs put at once into an oiled charlotte mold or into small timbal molds the molds may be garnished with mushrooms or chopped truffles or peas stand them in a pan of hot water cover with oiled paper and cook in the oven small molds twenty five minutes a large mold thirty five serve hot with cream mushroom sauce this quantity in small molds should serve twelve people in a large mold ten cream mushroom sauce one can of mushrooms two level tablespoonfuls of butter one half pint of milk two level tablespoonfuls of flour one half teaspoonful of salt one saltspoonful of pepper rub the butter and flour together and add the milk stir until boiling add the seasoning and the mushrooms cut into halves when hot it is ready to use end of chapter fourteen Chapter 15 of Ice Creams, Water Ices, Frozen Puddings. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Betty B. 
ice creams water ices frozen puddings by sarah tyson heston roar cold dishes poulet en bellevue one half box of gelatin one pint of chicken stock one bay leaf one onion the white meat of two chickens salt and pepper remove the white meat carefully from two boiled chickens split the breasts into halves long ways cover the gelatin with a half cupful of cold water to soak for a half hour add the seasonings to the stock or bouillon bring to a boil add the gelatin and if not clear clarify with the white of an egg add the juice of a lemon and strain take small oblong china or tin molds garnish the bottoms with fancy bits of good red pepper and chopped truffles baste over a little of the hot aspic and let them stand until very cold cool the remaining aspic but do not allow it to become solid put on top of each mold a half breast of chicken dust with salt and pepper pour over the cold aspic and stand them aside overnight at serving time dip the molds quickly into hot water turn out the cutlets dish them on luncheon plates and garnish with hearts of lettuce pass mayonnaise dressing this will make eight molds and serve eight persons use the dark meat for fricassee or stew of chicken tomatoes a l'algerienne the white meat of one chicken twenty four perfect tomatoes one fourth box of gelatin one half pint of chicken stock one half pint of cream one teaspoonful of anchovy paste three heads of fine lettuce one half pint of mayonnaise peel the tomatoes cut off the stem end and scoop out the hard portion and the seeds put the tomatoes on the ice put the meat of the chicken through the meat grinder season it with anchovy paste if you have it and salt and pepper soak the gelatin in a half cupful of cold water add the chicken stock bring to a boil add a half teaspoonful of salt a dash of pepper and the juice of half a lemon mix a part of this with the chicken whip the cream stir it into the chicken mixture and fill it into the tomatoes making them smooth on top when the tomatoes are very cold and the aspic is cool but not thick baste just a little over the top dust thickly with chopped parsley and finely chopped almonds and stand them in a cold place for several hours arrange each tomato in a little nest of lettuce leaves and pass with them mayonnaise dressing if these are made well they are the most sightly of the small cold dishes and cost almost nothing this of course will be served to twenty-four persons tongue sardines lobster crab meat or cold leftover meat may be substituted for chicken galantine of chicken two chickens one half pound of boiled ham one fourth pound of larding pork one can of mushrooms two teaspoonfuls of salt one egg one pound of lean veal two truffles salt and pepper singe the chickens and remove the head and feet place the chicken on the table with the breast down take a small sharp pointed sabatier knife and cut the skin from neck to rump right down the backbone carefully and slowly run the knife between the bones and the flesh keeping it always close to the bone take out first the wings then loosen the carcass and then take out the legs unjoint and separate each bone and take it out as you come to it do not take the small bones from the wings they may be cut off when you have removed all the flesh from the bones keeping it perfectly whole and without breaking the skin wipe the skin and put it on the table draw the legs and the wings inside take all the raw meat from the other chicken rejecting the skin and bones but you do not have to bone this one carefully put it in the meat grinder with half the ham all the veal and half the bacon when chopped season it with two teaspoonfuls of salt and two saltspoonfuls of white pepper add the egg and mix thoroughly put a thin layer of this into the bone chicken put in here and there long pieces of the remaining ham and bacon a layer of mushrooms blocks of truffles then another layer of the force meat and so continue until you have used all the ingredients pull up the skin and sew it down the back making a perfect roll tie the neck and rump roll this in cheesecloth fasten it securely and sew the cheesecloth so that the roll will be perfect when done put the bones in the soup kettle add a sliced onion a bay leaf 
and sufficient cold water to come just to the top of the bones bring to boiling point and put in the galantine as the chicken roll is called cover the kettle and boil continuously for four hours when done slightly cool remove the cloth and stand it away until perfectly cold strain the water which should measure two quarts add to it a box of gelatin that has been soaked in a cupful of water for an hour bring this to boiling point season it with salt and pepper add the juice of a lemon and the whites of two eggs slightly beaten boil five minutes and strain through two thicknesses of cheesecloth select a long round pudding mold or a regular bone chicken mold something like a large melon mold baste the mold inside with this liquid jelly decorated in patterns or unconventional designs using green and red pepper the hard-boiled white of egg and peas allow the remaining jelly to cool but not stiffen after you finish the decorations baste them carefully with whole gelatin and stand the mold on ice then put in a little more cold jelly until you have a good base upon which to rest the galantine put it in breast side down and pour over the remaining gelatin stand in a cold place for twenty four hours when ready to serve wipe the mold with a warm cloth and turn the galantine on to a long platter garnish the platter with hearts of lettuce to serve cut the galantine in the thinnest possible slices and serve it with a salad either celery or mixed vegetables or plain lettuce or it may be served with a sauce tartare or plain mayonnaise dressing this is one of the most elegant of cold dishes and will serve twenty-five persons chicken mousse one pint of cooked chopped chicken one half pint of milk two level tablespoonfuls of butter one teaspoonful of salt one level tablespoonful of flour one tablespoonful of granulated gelatin one saltspoonful of white pepper one half pint of cream rub the butter and the flour together over the fire add the milk stir until boiling and add the gelatin that has been soaked in a couple of tablespoonfuls of cold water for fifteen minutes add the salt pepper and chicken mix thoroughly and stand it aside to cool beat the cream to a stiff froth make a half cupful of mayonnaise from the yolk of one egg and eight tablespoonfuls of olive oil stir the cream gradually into the mayonnaise and then add it carefully to the cold chicken mixture turn it into an ordinary melon pudding mold cover closely and stand it in a bucket of cracked ice and salt it is wise to bind the cover seam to keep out the salt water when slightly frozen which will take about two hours remove the lid turn out the mousse cover the top with first a ring of hard-boiled whites chopped fine then a ring of finely chopped parsley inside this a ring of the yolks of the eggs pressed through a sieve and right in the center a sprig of curly parsley send at once to the table lobster crab flakes and cold roasted game may be used according to this recipe this will serve eight persons at a reception at a luncheon only six persons pate de foie gras in aspic one box of granulated gelatin one teaspoonful of beef extract one small onion one bay leaf one blade of mace one truffle one carrot one green pepper one red pepper one lemon one tureen of foie gras cover the gelatin with a half cupful of cold water to soak for a half hour put all the vegetables and seasoning in one quart of cold water bring to boiling point simmer gently twenty minutes add the beef extract one teaspoonful of salt and a saltspoonful of black pepper add the gelatin stir until the gelatin is dissolved and strain add the juice of the lemon and the whites of two eggs slightly beaten bring to boiling point boil rapidly for five minutes and strain through two thicknesses of cheesecloth cut the peppers into fancy shapes chop the truffle fine select a dozen dariole molds moisten them in cold water baste them with the aspic and when cold garnish the bottoms handsomely with a pepper and truffle put in another layer of aspic which must be cold but not thick on top of this place a slice of pate de foie gras cover them carefully with the aspic filling the mold to the top stand these away overnight serve on crisp lettuce leaves and pass with them a mayonnaise 
these are the handsomest of all the cold aspic dishes a single large mold may be used for ball suppers or large receptions to serve cut it into slices and pass mayonnaise of celery this will serve twelve persons boned turkey turkey is boned precisely the same as you bone a galantine of chicken use for the stuffing two chickens one pound of sausage meat one pound of veal three truffles one can of mushrooms one pound of ham take six hours to cook the turkey when cold put it in a boned turkey mold that has been garnished and fill with aspic cut in very thin slices to serve thirty persons boned quail purchase twenty four quails split them down the back and remove the bones keeping your knife close to the bone do not break the skin nor tear the flesh spread them out skin side down on a board and stuff them with the seasoned sausage meat put them into shape sew them down the back cover the breast of each with a slice of bacon put them in a baking pan add a half pint of hot stock and bake in a quick oven forty minutes dusting with pepper and basting frequently when cold remove the string from the back for a dozen quails use one box of gelatin one quart of milk one tablespoonful of grated onion two truffles four level tablespoonfuls of butter four level tablespoonfuls of flour two teaspoonfuls of salt one saltspoonful of white pepper soak the gelatin in the milk a half hour rub the butter and flour together then add the milk and gelatin stir until boiling and add all the seasoning and strain stand aside until cool but not thick place the birds on a tin sheet or a large platter and baste them with this cold white sauce as soon as the first basting has hardened baste them again this time decorate the breasts with the truffles cut into fancy shapes to serve arrange them around a large mound of mayonnaise of celery use either a meat platter or two round chopped dishes have the breasts of the birds down and the back slightly pressed into the salad in between each bird put a pretty bunch of curly parsley and garnish the top of the mound with spanish peppers cut into strips serve one to each person end of chapter fifteen chapter sixteen of ice creams water ices frozen puddings this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by betty b ice creams water ices frozen puddings by sarah tyson heston roar salads salads play a most important part in all conventional suppers chicken lobster crab duck tongue and lamb salad take the place of other meats although for a large supper there is no objection to serving a meat salad following a hot course if one can make a good mayonnaise dressing salads are the easiest of all refreshments and are most acceptable to the guests mayonnaise put the yolks of three eggs in a clean cold dish beat slightly and add slowly almost drop by drop a half pint or more of salad oil after adding the first half pint add a half teaspoonful of vinegar now and then to prevent breaking you may add a quart of oil if you like you may serve it plain or stir in at the last moment stiffly whipped cream one quart of mayonnaise will hold one quart of whipped cream for light colored salads as sweetbread and waldorf it is well to use the whipped cream slightly colored with a drop of vegetable green sauce tartare add to a half pint of mayonnaise dressing a tablespoonful of chopped gherkin the same of chopped parsley four chopped olives and a tablespoonful of capers sauce suedoise one half pint of mayonnaise one half pint of cream two tablespoonfuls of finely grated horseradish whip the cream and drain it then stir it carefully into the mayonnaise and at last add the horseradish this sauce is appropriate to serve with boned partridges or quail and is also nice to serve with mixed cold meats french dressing put eight tablespoonfuls of oil in a bowl add a half teaspoonful of salt and a piece of ice the size of an egg work the ice with the oil until the salt is thoroughly dissolved then add a tablespoonful of tarragon vinegar 
and a drop of tabasco sauce remove the ice beat rapidly until you have a creamy dressing and use at once french dressing should be used over cucumber or tomato molds and is nice with fish or chicken mousse and east indian salad cucumber molds two good sized cucumbers one half box of gelatin a pint of chicken stock one teaspoonful of salt one tablespoonful of onion juice one saltspoonful of pepper the juice of one lemon peel and grate the cucumbers add the gelatin to the stock soak for twenty minutes bring to a boil and add the seasoning then stir in the drained cucumber turn into small round timbal cups and stand aside to harden serve with any cold fish dish as cold boiled slice of halibut or fish in aspic these are nice for sunday night supper with broiled sardines tomato molds one can of tomatoes one box of gelatin one onion one saltspoonful of celery seed one bay leaf one blade of mace two tablespoonfuls of tarragon vinegar one teaspoonful of paprika two teaspoonfuls of salt cover the gelatin with a cupful of cold water to soak for fifteen minutes add all the seasoning to the tomatoes bring to boiling point add the gelatin and strain turn into twelve small tomato molds and stand aside to harden serve with mayonnaise dressing as an accompaniment to boned chicken or turkey or chicken pate or alone with mayonnaise as a complete salad chop celery a little cold cooked meat or nuts may be added when the molds are to be served as a salad with this addition one half the recipe will serve twelve persons crabs ravigo purchase as many crab shells as you have people to serve to each six allow a pint of crab flakes if you buy the crabs fresh twelve crabs will serve six people squeeze over the flakes the juice of one lemon add a half teaspoonful of salt and a dash of tabasco fill the meat loosely into the shells place each shell on a pretty paper doily on a plate and spread over a thick layer of mayonnaise dressing with which you have mixed a tablespoonful of chopped parsley a tablespoonful of tarragon leaves a tablespoonful of chopped onion or shallot and a tablespoonful of green chives chicken salad cut cold boiled chicken into dice add an equal quantity of tender celery season with salt pepper and lemon juice mix with mayonnaise dressing and serve on lettuce leaves a four pound chicken and six heads of tender celery three heads of lettuce a half pint of whipped cream and one pint of mayonnaise will serve fifteen persons lobster salad cut cold boiled lobster into cubes of an inch mix with mayonnaise dressing and serve on lettuce leaves one three pound lobster will serve six persons crab salad season crab flakes with salt pepper and lemon juice mix them with mayonnaise dressing and serve on lettuce leaves garnished with cress one pint of flakes will serve six persons tongue salad cut fresh cooked beef's tongue or calf's tongue into dice have ready peeled perfectly round smooth tomatoes take out the core and scoop out the seeds fill each tomato with the cubes of tongue sprinkle over a teaspoonful of lemon juice and a little salt and pepper stand these on nests of lettuce leaves put on top of each a large tablespoonful of mayonnaise dust thickly with paprika and serve one to each person lamb salad cut cold boiled lamb into dice mix with it half the quantity of freshly cooked green peas or canned peas add a half can of mushrooms chopped fine salt pepper and lemon juice mix with mayonnaise dressing and serve on lettuce leaves garnished with large sprigs of mint cap the top of the dish with a good-sized sprig of fresh mint and sprinkle capers all over the salad a nice plain lamb salad is made by mixing leftover cold lamb with mayonnaise serve on lettuce leaves and garnish with chopped mint a quart will serve ten persons tomatoes on surprise this is one of the nicest of the salads for a simple card party it takes the place of both vegetables and meat and with brown bread and nut sandwiches as an accompaniment is very attractive peel the tomatoes cut off the stem end and scoop out the core and seeds fill the tomatoes with either crab flakes chopped lobster canned salmon or sardines squeeze over a little lemon juice and dust with salt and pepper turn them upside down on a nest of lettuce leaves and cover the tomato with creamy mayonnaise sweetbread salad 
two pairs of sweetbreads four ounces of almonds four ounces of pecan meats two ounces of shelled brazilian nuts two spanish peppers one half can of mushrooms two heads of celery two heads of lettuce one pint of mayonnaise one pint of cream one can of french peas this is the most elaborate of all salads is palatable and comparatively wholesome put the sweetbreads into boiling water add a tablespoonful of vinegar and simmer gently for one hour when cold remove the membrane and pick the sweetbreads apart put them in a bowl cover them with an onion sliced and squeeze over the juice of a lemon cover the bowl and stand it aside overnight blanch and chop the almonds and chop the pecans remove the onion from the sweetbreads mix in the nuts add the white portions of the celery cut the size of the sweetbreads add the mushrooms sliced two teaspoonfuls of salt a saltspoonful of white pepper and a saltspoonful of paprika add the cream whipped to the mayonnaise and mix a portion of it with the sweetbreads and celery have a round shallow salad bowl lined with the lettuce leaves turn in the center the sweetbread salad and cover it over with the remaining quantity of mayonnaise put the peas in a ring around the base of the salad and cap the top with the yolk of a hard-boiled egg cut the white of the egg into eighths and press them upside down around the yolk forming a sort of a daisy cut the spanish peppers into rings and arrange them just above the peas put here and there around the base above the peas ripe or green olives and send to the table this will serve at supper or luncheon ten persons roast beef salad for impromptu evening affairs any cold leftover meat may be utilized in a salad beef mutton and tongue are usually served with french dressing seasoned with tomato ketchup cut the meat into dice season with salt and pepper dish them on lettuce or they may be mixed in the winter with chopped celery or chopped crisp cabbage and basted with french dressing season with two or three tablespoonfuls of tomato ketchup for beef mint sauce or a drop of tabasco sauce for mutton a little worcestershire sauce for tongue a quart will serve ten persons east indian salad this is purely a vegetable salad it is exceedingly nice for a simple evening affair shave sufficient cabbage to make a pint soak it in cold water for one hour changing the water once or twice cover a half box of gelatin with a half cupful of cold water to soak for a half an hour put a half can of tomatoes in a saucepan add one onion chopped a teaspoonful of salt a saltspoonful of pepper and the juice of a lemon or two tablespoonfuls of vinegar bring to boiling point and add the gelatin cover the bottom of a large melon mold with finely chopped celery or cooked carrots put on top of this a few drops of onion juice then a thin layer of cabbage a dusting of salt and pepper then a goodly quantity of india relish cover this over with chopped nuts pecans hickory or peanuts then another layer of celery and so continue until the mold is full seasoning the layers with salt and pepper have the last layer chopped celery strain over this the tomato aspic which should be cold but not thick and stand aside for four or five hours serve plain or garnished with lettuce leaves or cress this will serve twelve persons potato salad fancy potato salad may be served for an evening affair with an accompaniment of cold tongue or it may be garnished with hard-boiled eggs and form the entire course serve with it brown bread and butter and coffee four potatoes eight tablespoonfuls of olive oil two tablespoonfuls of cream two tablespoonfuls of tarragon vinegar one level teaspoonful of salt one saltspoonful of pepper wash the potatoes and boil them with skins on the moment they are done drain the water dry and peel put the oil salt pepper and vinegar in a bowl beat rapidly until thoroughly mixed and then add one good sized onion sliced very thin or use two tablespoonfuls of grated onion put in the hot potatoes sliced toss them a moment and if you have it sprinkle over two tablespoonfuls of vinegar from pickled walnuts or a tablespoonful of mushroom ketchup stand aside to cool when ready to serve turn on to a cold platter garnish with chopped parsley and if you have them chopped pickled beets this is sufficient for six persons french potato salad moisten a teaspoonful of cornstarch in four tablespoonfuls of milk add two tablespoonfuls of cream 
and stir over hot water until thick then add gradually six tablespoonfuls of olive oil a teaspoonful of french made mustard a level teaspoonful of salt and a saltspoonful of pepper boil four potatoes cut them into blocks and when nearly cold mix them with this dressing and stand aside until very cold serve with a garnish of chopped celery or lettuce leaves this will serve six persons macedoine salad a mixture of vegetables peas beans carrots turnips can be purchased canned at any grocery store drain wash them in cold water dish them on a bed of shaved cabbage or lettuce leaves and cover them with french dressing all these vegetables may be cooked at home and used cold string beans garnished with carrots make an excellent salad banana salad for this use the red bananas roll them out of the skin rather than strip the skin from them and cut them into slices a half inch thick cover the bottom of your salad bowl with crisp lettuce leaves then put over the bananas allowing one banana to each two persons squeeze over the juice of a lemon and when ready to serve baste with french dressing apple and nut salad four tart apples one cupful of pecan meats twenty four blanched almonds two sweet spanish peppers the rule for french dressing peel the apples cut them into dice squeeze over the juice of one or two lemons and stand them aside until wanted the lemon juice will prevent discoloration chop the nuts at serving time line the salad bowl with a layer of chopped celery or cabbage or lettuce leaves then a layer of apples nuts celery apples and nuts baste with the french dressing and if you have them garnish with the sweet peppers cut into strips and use at once this using a pint of chopped cabbage or celery will serve six persons cantaloupe salad this is the newest and most sightly of salads arrange crisp lettuce or romaine leaves on individual plates cut a cold ripe cantaloupe into halves take out the seeds and with a large vegetable scoop or teaspoon scoop out balls or egg-shaped pieces heap a half dozen of these on the lettuce leaves and at serving time baste them well with french dressing and serve watermelon may be substituted for cantaloupe end of chapter 16chapter seventeen of ice creams water ices frozen puddings this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by betty b ice creams water ices frozen puddings by sarah tyson heston Rohr. sandwiches sandwiches may be made from thin white bread or whole wheat bread or boston brown bread or nut bread a nut loaf is easily made at short notice and needs only butter to make an excellent sandwich an endless variety of sandwiches may be made from materials always at hand for cheese sandwiches grind or mash common american cheese add a palatable seasoning of tomato ketchup worcestershire sauce and a little melted butter a teaspoonful of these will be sufficient for a quarter of a pound of cheese Put this between thin slices of unbuttered bread. If a large quantity of sandwiches is to be made, beat the butter to a cream before using it. Meats. All sorts of meats, just a little left over, may be chopped, seasoned, and utilized for sandwiches. If the meat is slightly moistened with a little olive oil, cream, or melted butter, and the sandwiches are wrapped in a damp cloth as soon as made and closed in a tin bread box, they will keep nicely for several hours on a warm day put a few moist lettuce leaves on top of the sandwiches under the cloth and put the box in a cold place canned salmon sardines or boiled salt cod pounded and nicely seasoned with oil and lemon juice or mayonnaise make nice sandwiches to serve with molded tomato jelly and coffee for a winter evening they are quite enough with coffee alone in an emergency nut sandwiches are made by putting chopped nuts or nut butter between thin slices of buttered bread or crackers sweet sandwiches are made by putting a mixture of chopped fruits between thin slices of buttered bread the fruits best suited for sandwiches are dates raisins candied ginger and cherries and washed figs 
these may be used separately or blended using less ginger than other fruits a nice filling may be made from a half pound of dates an ounce of ginger and ten cents worth of roasted peanuts or a quarter of a pound of pecans put these through a meat chopper add the juice of an orange and pack the mixture in jelly tumblers keep in a cold place this will keep a month in winter and equally long in a refrigerator in summer sweet sandwiches are usually cut into fingers or into rounds with an ordinary biscuit cutter honolulu sandwiches are made by rubbing one roll of neufchatel cheese with a half cupful of grated apple two sweet spanish peppers and twenty-four blanched and chopped almonds add salt and a drop of tabasco sauce spread between thin slices of unbuttered bread jelly or canned fruit sandwiches are made by spreading jelly or mashed fruit drained on a very thin slice of buttered bread trim off the crusts and roll quickly tie with baby ribbon or press it firmly together these are usually served with chocolate or tea chicken salad or celery mayonnaise sandwiches are usually served with coffee and can be made quickly by mixing any leftover chicken or tender white celery with mayonnaise and putting the mixture between thin slices of buttered bread a lettuce leaf on the bread first holds the salad nicely one may use two lettuce leaves if necessary nut bread two cupfuls of flour one half cupful of chopped nuts two teaspoonfuls of baking powder one cupful of milk one egg two tablespoonfuls of sugar one half teaspoonful of salt sift the salt baking powder and flour together add and mix in the nuts and sugar beat the egg add the milk and stir these in the flour mix well and turn it in a greased bread pan cover and allow it to stand fifteen minutes bake in a moderately quick oven a half hour pecans hickory nuts peanuts or english walnuts may be used use the next day after it is baked cut thin butter lightly and press two slices together serve whole or cut into halves do not remove the crusts end of chapter seventeen chapter eighteen of ice creams water ices frozen puddings this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by betty b ice creams water ices frozen puddings by sarah tyson heston roar suggestions for church suppers nut meat roll one pound of chopped beef one quart of roasted peanuts in shells one teaspoonful of salt one saltspoonful of pepper three shredded wheat biscuits two eggs one tablespoonful onion juice one tablespoonful of parsley shell and chop the peanuts mix them with the meat and add the shredded wheat rubbed fine salt pepper parsley chopped and onion juice mix well beat the eggs slightly add three tablespoonfuls of water and mix this into the meat form in a roll about eight inches long roll in oiled paper place it in a baking pan add a half cupful of water to the pan and bake in a moderate oven three quarters of an hour remove the paper and stand aside to cool serve in thin slices with either tomato or potato salad this will serve eight persons at a cost of about four cents each jellied veal three knuckles of veal four onions one carrot three teaspoonfuls of salt eight tablespoonfuls of vinegar six gherkins one teaspoonful of black pepper wash the knuckles remove the meat and cut it in pieces put the bones in a kettle the meat on top and pour over six quarts of cold water bring to a boil skim and simmer gently two hours add the onion sliced the carrot chopped salt and pepper and simmer one hour longer drain in a colander dip long molds or ordinary bread pans in cold water cover the bottom with slices of hard-boiled eggs put the meat in bits on top of this seasoning it with a little salt slice the gherkins and put them in layers between the meat strain the liquid add the vinegar and pour it over the meat there should be just enough to cover it nicely if there is more than this boil it down before adding vinegar stand aside overnight when cold dip the mold a second in boiling water 
and turn the jelly in a platter. Serve cut in slices with either a nice cold slaw or cabbage and celery salad. Jellied beef is made the same, substituting a leg or shin of beef. This will cost about 75 cents and will make 25 to 30 slices. Bagged veal. Two pounds of lean ham, four pounds of veal cutlet, three shredded wheat biscuits, two eggs, two onions, one teaspoonful of powdered sage, one half teaspoonful of allspice, one teaspoonful of salt, one half teaspoonful of black pepper. Put the meat raw through a meat chopper. Add the biscuits crumbed, the onions grated, and all the seasonings. Work it well with the hands and mix in the eggs, slightly beaten. Pack the mixture in clean salt bags or bags about that size. Plunge them in a kettle of boiling water, boil rapidly ten minutes, and simmer three hours. When cool, turn the bags wrong side out off the meat. Serve sliced like summer sausage. This will cost one and a half dollars and will serve 25 persons. A Spanish stew for 100 persons. 25 pounds of round of beef, six sweet peppers, or one can of Spanish pimentos, 12 sweet turnips, one half bottle of Worcestershire sauce, one cupful of flour, one pound of suet, 10 large onions, three gallon cans of peas, 12 carrots, one jar of beef extract, four tablespoonfuls of salt, four tablespoonfuls of cornstarch, one quarter pound of butter. Put the suet into a large kettle or in two smaller ones. Try it out and remove the crackling. Add to the hot fat the onions and peppers chopped fine. Shake until they are well cooked and slightly browned. Add the meat cut into cubes of one inch. Cover the kettles and cook a half hour, stirring now and then. Dissolve the beef extract in three gallons of hot water. Pour it over the meat and simmer for two hours. Add the carrots and turnips cut into dice and more water if necessary, and cook one hour longer. Add the flour and cornstarch moistened in cold water and all the seasonings. Stir and boil ten minutes. Add the peas drained and serve. This is nice garnished with small hot milk biscuits. Taste before serving it to see if you have added sufficient salt. Veal roll. Four pounds of lean veal, three shredded wheat biscuits, one teaspoonful of salt, one half teaspoonful of sage, one half pound of lean ham, two eggs, one tablespoonful of parsley, one saltspoonful of pepper. Put the veal and ham through a meat chopper, add all the seasonings and the biscuits rubbed fine. Mix thoroughly, add the eggs slightly beaten, mix again and form into a roll three inches in diameter. Roll in oiled paper, place in a baking pan, cover the bottom of the pan with hot water, add a slice of onion, and if you have it, a little chopped celery tops. Bake slowly one and a half hours, basting over the paper every 15 minutes. When done, remove the paper and put it in a cold place. Serve in thin slices with tomato jelly salad. This will cost about $1 and will serve 18 persons. Man of War Salad For 25 persons, chop sufficient hard white cabbage to make two quarts. Cover it with cold water, let it soak for an hour, and then wash it through several cold waters and dry it in a towel. Cover three boxes of gelatin with a pint of cold water to soak a half hour. Open three cans of tomatoes, put them in a saucepan with four chopped onions, a cupful of chopped celery tops, if you have them. Bring to a boil, add the juice of a lemon, a level tablespoonful of salt, ten drops of Tabasco sauce, the juice of a lemon, or two tablespoonfuls of vinegar, and the gelatin. Stir a moment and press through a sieve. Dip bread pans or melon molds in cold water. Put in a layer of cabbage, then a very thin layer of Indian relish, then cabbage, and so continue until the molds are filled. Pour over the tomato jelly cold and stand aside overnight. Serve in slices with cooked or French dressing. Cooked dressing. Put a pint of milk over the fire in a double boiler. Add three level tablespoonfuls of cornstarch moistened in a little cold milk. Cook until thick and smooth. Take from the fire, add the beaten yolks of four eggs, and work in slowly two tablespoonfuls of butter. Add a teaspoonful of salt and a saltspoonful of pepper. When cool, add the juice of a lemon or four tablespoonfuls of vinegar. Fold in carefully the well-beaten whites of the eggs 
and stand aside until very cold grandmother's potato salad boil ten large potatoes in their jackets peel them and when cool cut eight into dice peel and mash the remaining two while hot add to them a quarter pound of sweet butter four tablespoonfuls of grated onion two teaspoonfuls of salt a dash of cayenne two drops of tabasco sauce and press through a fine sieve hard boil two eggs rub the yolks to a paste and add two raw yolks when smooth add to these gradually the potato mixture thin to the consistency of good mayonnaise with vinegar at serving time mix the potato blocks and one can of drained peas with the dressing being very careful not to break them dish on lettuce leaves and garnish with chopped red beets or better chopped celery this is an excellent cheap salad and will serve fifteen persons salmon pudding remove the bone skin and oil from two pound cans of salmon boil together two cupfuls of white bread crumbs and one cupful of milk take from the fire and add one cupful of boiled rice a teaspoonful of salt a saltspoonful of pepper a teaspoonful of onion juice and four eggs slightly beaten mix and work in the fish press the whole through a colander and pack it at once into a mold cover and steam three quarters of an hour serve hot with cream sauce this will serve twelve persons nut cake at suppers where the yolks of eggs are used for mayonnaise or cooked dressing the whites accumulate and are lost if not used in some white cake one half cupful of butter two cupfuls of flour one and one half cupfuls of sugar three quarter cupful of water one cupful of english walnut or hickory nut meats two rounding teaspoonfuls of baking powder whites of four eggs cream the butter add the water and flour alternately beating all the while beat the whites add half of them to the mixture then all the nuts chopped then the baking powder dry and beat well fold in the remaining whites bake in a round cake pan in a moderate oven three quarters of an hour when cool ice the top and decorate it with nut meats scones for twenty five persons sift three quarts of flour with six rounding teaspoonfuls of baking powder and two of salt beat without separating three eggs rub into the flour a quarter of a pound of butter or three tablespoonfuls of snowdrift add to the eggs one quart and a half of milk and stir this into the flour mix quickly and drop by spoonfuls in greased baking pans and bake fifteen minutes in a quick oven serve at once these are better and more easily made than biscuits poor man's fruit cake three and a half cupfuls of flour one cupful of brown sugar one half cupful of new orleans molasses one pound of seeded raisins one cupful of sour milk one half cupful of butter one teaspoonful of cinnamon one teaspoonful of allspice one teaspoonful of soda cut the raisins into halves and flour them with four tablespoonfuls of the flour dissolve the soda in a tablespoonful of water add it to the thick sour milk beat a minute add the molasses beat again add the butter melted carefully and stir in the flour add the spices and beat well stir in the raisins and turned into a greased bread pan bake in a moderate oven one hour when done turn from the pan baste with the syrup made by boiling four tablespoonfuls of sugar with three of water and add two teaspoonfuls of currant or grape jelly shut the cake in a tin box for a week or more if made well this is moist and rich at very little cost banana layer one quarter cupful of butter one cupful of sugar two-thirds cupful of water two cupfuls of flour two rounding teaspoonfuls of baking powder whites of four eggs put together the same as an ice cream cake and bake in three layers when cold put together with banana filling banana filling boil together one cupful of sugar and a half cupful of water until they spin a heavy thread and pour slowly beating all the while into the well-beaten whites of two eggs beat until rather stiff and cold when the cakes are cold spread one-third of this filling over one cake cover with thin slices of red bananas put on another cake on this another third of filling and bananas and the remaining cake cover this with the remaining filling and dust thickly with chopped nuts do not let this stand too long 
or the filling will absorb moisture from the bananas and run down the cake ice cream cake one and one half cupfuls of sugar two and one half cupfuls of flour one quarter cupful of butter one cupful of water two rounding teaspoonfuls of baking powder whites of five eggs cream the butter adding slowly the sugar sift the flour with the baking powder add the water and flour alternately to the sugar mixture and beat well fold in the well-beaten whites and bake in three layers put together with a soft icing made from the whites of two eggs fruit jelly dip a fancy mold into cold water fill it half full of mixed chopped candied fruits or use dates figs and bananas chopped fill the mold with a well-made lemon or orange gelatin serve plain or with whipped cream mock eggs one half box of gelatin one can pared apricots one cupful of sugar one pint of water whites of three eggs juice of three lemons cover the gelatin with a half cupful of cold water to soak for a half hour add the sugar and the water boiling stir until the gelatin is dissolved add the lemon juice strain and cool until congealed but not too hard add the unbeaten whites of eggs stand the bowl in a pan of cracked ice or cold water and beat until the whole mass is as white as snow pour into ramekin dishes or paper cases press a half apricot rounding side up in the center and stand aside in a cold place end of chapter eighteen end of ice creams water ices frozen puddings by sarah tyson heston rohrer